if we're going to, we may want to meet on July 8th at 6. I already mm -hmm. had that on the calendar. On July 8th? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually on the 22nd. Do you mean that? just put them all at 6. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's my Monday off. I can so, do that. <laughs> Um, I may lose my train of thought, you guys. So, July 22nd, I don't see an opportunity for us to meet to talk about this stuff at all. Because mm -hmm. we're going to be in East Montpelier. We've got 6 o'clock, and then we've got um, to meet with the East Montpelier Select Board right after. I don't know if they can find us a spot that we could meet. I'm sure there's probably going to be some things on the 22nd we're going to have to do. So, I'm hoping we can maybe meet somewhere at the East Montpelier Town Office, like warrants, that kind of stuff that we're going to have to do on the 22nd. But I don't see a, well, a good place to meet there to do you, do you do think we could to do figure out, this. if we could figure out on the 8th whether or not, you know, who we're going to interview, well, that's what I'm then, I, then I figure we could just shoot for first select board meeting in September to make a decision. You mean August? As, no, I think in September. And then give oh. us August to we'll have the interviews, um, you know, first meeting in August and maybe a second meeting in August depending on how many vendors. Right. And then we can render a decision. Well, whatever we, what, we should decide September. this process right. going forward because I think we need to let the vendors who responded know mm -hmm. that this is a change in our timeline. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we could come to a decision tonight about the process, when we're going to meet and what we're going to do, that would be helpful and Katie can get it in the minutes. Right. Yeah, I think uh, we can agree to the first step of um, doing the scorecard and meeting again on the 8th to review those inputs um, and agree upon next steps. I think we're in a better position to talk about an overall schedule mm -hmm. in terms of when we would award. Um, I think that uh, John's suggestion makes sense that we look to the Wait, first meeting September. in September to decide um, who we're to gonna... award with an outside date of the second meeting. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure on July 8th at 6, there wasn't something else that we were planning on. So I had sure. IT vendors in there from yeah, ages IT. ago. Yeah, IT okay. vendors so presentations. Okay. Okay. Because at our last meeting, yeah, we said that we might be in a position to start getting presentations as early as the 8th. So Presentations tentatively could be in August on the 12th and the 26th. Well, I think we have to have some flexibility well, in our wondering. scheduling. Right. 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 Because some of these vendors, mm -hmm. you know, they may not all be available on the same night. Right. Right. And we, yeah, we've disrupted that. Boy, would it be nice if we can narrow it to two no, meetings? Well, I was going to say one to three vendors in one meeting so that we see them all back-to-back, because... Back. Yeah, that would be ideal. Maybe, Rose, you said you got Mondays off. Every do, other Monday. Maybe we could do it just... And every other Friday. On, so on you're August off Mondays. on August 12th or 25th? August? Yeah, that'd be nice. Lovely. So spend the Monday August 12th <laughs> and 26th, I'm not off. The 12th and 25th, you're not off. 26th. So you're not available at six. No. I'm trying to make notes. You okay, you're getting this in the mm -hmm. We don't have to keep it in the minutes, but for now, just mm -hmm. so <laughs> try to when I'm doing the agenda as well know. Um I I should, I should go out and get my August calendar and switch books. Um so what are we Rose cannot do daytime a daytime in August or Monday day. Oh, I thought we were talking about 6 o'clock. John was suggesting. Well, I was saying, Jesse, any alternative, I mean, a possibility. Oh, maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm off all day, Monday the 5th and Monday the 19th. I'm off all day. Okay, so, so we could have a special meeting on one of those days. Monday um, the 5th is probably not a good one. Like 5th of August. Oh, oh 5th of August. August. Oh. Fourth of July should be over for you, John, by then. <laughs> <laughs> I still may be staggering. No. All right. Potato salad. Let's hope not. <laughs> Actually, I have a fifth off, so. Okay, so, so tentative dates to do a daytime or a whatever 
are the Mondays in August um, of the 5th and the 19th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have, to, we have to find a place to meet because the town office is kind of crazy on Mondays. But I want the town office staff to be able to come to the presentations if you wanted to. Does the town hall have any room? Well, we're going to actually, the town hall committee is meeting at the town hall on Thursday. So I have a better idea, but there might not be any internet and that yeah. kind of stuff. I mean, this, we're what, uh, six, five or six weeks from August 5th. Is it crazy to say the town offices are closed on Monday, August 5th? Close August 5th. That's just, just one of the things. Just because we're being late. Or we'll close space. at noon? I can't do it. No, you can't. You can't do it on the street. <laughs> not all of our office no. staff is we're, available we're on late. August 5th. <laughs> are you you're not available on August 5th? I could be available. That's my birthday, but I oh. could probably work that day. Have cake. That's the yeah. Oh, yes, I'm here. Your vendors all have to bring cake. Cake, cake. Oh, no, <laughs> that's cake with <laughs> tart. Custard tart with fruit on top. Oh, that's oh, all good, too. Is that something you made? No, she bought it at oh. Delicate Decadence. Oh, I've, I've, I've oh, thought about I'll make you one. I'll, I've thought about trying to make one. Specialties. No, I paint those. I anyway, mean, no, That'd it's fine. Cool. I have worked on my birthday for years and years. I, it doesn't matter. What I think you would want to do is just run that by Judy. Yeah, we have to do and make sure to there aren't them. any election um, ramifications oh. given what is going on currently. Well, uh, we're meeting well, on Thursday, staff meeting. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of run this by here. Katie will give me the to do mm -hmm. notes. What if there is then? another? Right, maybe not election bad. or something. But if there's no, if it's just a regular busy Monday, then I think uh, if it's closed or open late, open late, open late, 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 late at eleven instead of at eight. So, anyways, we can I figure that out. Call. So, um, at some point, though, I think we need to send the vendors an email and just say that we're not. Due to unforeseen circumstances, we're not prepared to. Well, that's why I'm doing that tomorrow after we have this meeting, so okay. that I could. I wanted to have this meeting first, so I could right, at least right. give some kind of yeah, idea yeah. or Absolutely. time frame. Why don't we? Is it possible to just say, to your point of, well, they may not be available. On the other hand, it would be nice to see them all at once. Mm -hmm. Staff, obviously. Can we just say we're looking at either the fifth or the nineteenth? Um, please let us know if. If there's absolutely no way you can participate in a presentation on one either daytime or evening, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and makes then, sense. And I that think. way they can get back to you right away, and mm -hmm. then we can pick. Yeah, right. and, you know, if they say neither of those dates would work, that's fine. You know, then we know we have to look at some others, but right. Or maybe not. If yeah. you know, if they have two dates and they're two weeks apart, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like. And we're, and we're a month be, out. And right, they should be able to come up with something. Yeah, right now, um, the 5th and the 19th on the calendar for the website, there's nothing. Okay. I know that they don't usually schedule at least anything on Monday nights, no matter what Monday it is, in case we need. So. Okay. Right. Um, whoops. All right, so I will get uh, notifications out to the vendors tomorrow. I will send out a modified version of the scorecard um, that will apply to round one scoring to mean the section dealing with vendor demonstrations. Mm -hmm. You just put the weight at zero, and that will accomplish it. Yeah. Redistribute yeah. the weight. Easy peasy. But then I have to. Assign that way to something else and mm -hmm. it, back, you know, it might be extra it might be good just to have a separate box for the demonstration we might have thoughts on the demonstration you know when yeah. they came and talked to us did they talk english i could do i could do a second uh, second yeah, yeah, that would is be, what i'll do oh yeah and that way i can round one will have a full weight of the assignment mm -hmm. so take that five points off of the vendor demonstration how you vote that we assign it. You want me to put it under project understanding so that three and four are both at 25? Put it under. Well, yeah, I think the. I think there are terms, conditions, and rates. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was, so that's already really heavy. Right. So, I was yeah. thinking that okay. yeah, project understanding is really sure. important. Okay. No. And then I'll have a second tab, a second tab just for the, be for the demonstration. Right. Because when we're doing when they're doing their demonstration, we might make notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other Anything questions or thoughts on this section? And then I've got something else to go to with one okay. minute that we said we would cover if everybody discussed they want to see it now or if they prefer to do the scoring first because um, it was requested that I do an analysis, um, very high helicopter mm -hmm. level analysis of the RFPs and present to the board a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, mm -hmm. and threats. I can do that now if you we would like to see it. Um, if you would prefer to score on your own first with your own And that's analysis. okay, open discussion? Yes. The way I've structured it, it is. Okay. Yeah. Like I say, it's a, it's a helicopter view, so I try okay. to keep it very generic. Okay, because yeah. I don't want to be overly influenced. Okay. No, I was thinking about Right, that too. But. All right, so, so I you feel like it's not going to overly influence our review of the. It, it must, if it's that really high, if it's okay in open discussion, it must not be vendor specific. It is vendor specific. Um, it might help us to, for those of us that haven't done this before. And to see what a SWAT is. Yeah. Well, and I did read them, so I, I actually, so I have some of my own impressions mm -hmm. already. And probably now is not the time to discuss that, just mm -hmm. do this helicopter view. Well, um, you're just doing pros and cons, not opinions. Like right. Beyond that, right? Yeah, exactly. It just kind of what I, impressions that I've gotten based upon the responses we've oh. seen, but not going into detail about I mean, the There's responses. one, for instance, that, that said we're not going to be available on summer vacation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that there's, a, there's an easy That's one a, for me. Right. To, uh, um, did they say that, or did they no, say? No, it wasn't exactly that. Well, I looked at it, because I've looked at that. That was a yeah. shorthand yeah. of, yeah. That was, yeah, I, I remember that. More difficult to reach in the months of Right, which something like that. I'm thinking about it though, and what information is contained in. I would support a motion that we do it in an executive session. Because of the contractual and proprietary nature of the, some of the information in the proposals that's reflected yeah. in your SWAT. Yeah. So moved. Second. So we've only oh. got 20 minutes to do yeah, this. Yeah, we can do it. Mm -hmm. okay. Just got to get rid of the media. Mr. School District. It will allow the town to continue to use the school, elementary school property as uh, an emergency shelter for town recreational programs and activities. You will be able to hold town meetings and elections there. And when you choose to or want to, be able to hold town board committee and commission meetings. You'll be responsible for supervising your activities when you're on the property. Um, you will be required to, of course, maintain your own liability insurance. They'll insure the property. Mm -hmm. You'll each, to the extent that the law authorizes you, indemnify each other. So your problems are your problems. The school problems are the school problems, for example. Um, you can't assign this to anybody else. It's not like you're going to assign it to Marshfield, but yeah. you, you can't assign it to anyone else. The school district can only assign it to um, Washington Central Supervisory Unified Union Supervisory District. Right, with Washington success. County. Washington WC, WC Unified. Yes. USDB. Um, exactly. Um, that's really the the the, the nut, of, nut of it all. The rest of it is just basically boilerplate. Um, and should we tell them that the school board signed? This on what was the date? The school board signed this on June 17th, a week ago. Yeah, we were John and myself and so, who else so, was there? So I'd like to move yep. um, to approve the school property use agreement between the town of Callis and the town of Callis School District and authorize the chair, Denise Wheeler, to sign the school property use agreement. And I'm looking for a second. 
The second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. was signing this, your free act indeed, and the free act indeed of the town of Calus. Yes. Put that on the ground for now, and I'll remember not to step on it. Okay, the next document is an easement deed. It goes along with the school use agreement. It essentially uh, takes the, the agreed upon rights that the school district has given the town and made them property rights. So they will run with the land going forward. Okay? And so if the property were to change hands from the town of Calais School District to a successor, these rights will transfer with that title. So if it changes hands to a unified district. Exactly right. Okay. Yep. Okay. And it's, it's the same basic rights. The rights to use it as an emergency <laughs> shelter. Uh, the right to reuse the uh, recreation fields, playgrounds, and gymnasium equipment for recreational purposes. Uh, easements for town meeting and town elections. Uh, easements for town board, committee, and commission meetings. And going along with this is a right of the public to access the buildings as well, to, to use, use them for those purposes and to attend those meetings and events. Um, there is a right for pedestrian and vehicular access, so people can walk to the property, across the property, and park their vehicles there for those purposes. Um, and as we did before, each party is going to the extent authorized by the law, indemnify the other against claims that might arise against one another. Okay. okay? All right. Everybody so, understand. that being that, John, if you could. So, I would motion. move to approve and accept the easement deed from the town of Callis School District to the town of Callis and authorize the chair to sign the easement deed. I'm looking for a second. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Ask you to write in 24th of June. Was this your free act indeed and the free act indeed of the town of Calus? Yes. Okay. So two down and one left to go. The third document is an option to purchase the school property. Um, like the easement, this will run with the land. And you, the school, excuse me, the town will have an option to purchase the school property for one dollar, in the event that um, the school is no longer uh, used for um, on-site education of children under an accredited academic curriculum for a period of 180 days. Okay, it so the, one school year. Essentially, that yes. Okay, and that if it's not used, if it's not used for educating children. Then, you, then the town would have the right to exercise this option, okay? Um, or if the property has been abandoned. And, and when, if that were to happen, does that include the contents? Um, no, it basically includes the building and the land, okay? I would, it includes the building and the land, okay? Um, and if you exercise the option, you agree to, for so long as economically practical, endeavor to maintain the subject premises for community, civic, and public use. Now, this is there is a similar article in the Article of Agreement, uh, um, uh, Articles of Agreement among the forming districts that form the new district. This is in addition to that, 
Okay? And the notion being that, that, might have, that those articles of agreement might have the possibility of being amended down right. the road, yeah. but this could not be amended except by with the permission of the town of Cowles. Okay? And that would have to be a public vote? Or an action of the select board? Hmm. Might have to be a public vote because it's a could be a conveyance of an interest in land. So we'd have to, uh, to I mean, the conveyance of an interest in municipal property, you'd have to examine that at the time. But okay. good luck. Okay. 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 So, John? So I, I would move to approve, I move to approve and accept the option the option granted by the town of Callis School District to the town of Callis and authorize the chair to sign the option. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Sign date there. So these will be remitted to the clerk for recording. Yeah, Jim's gonna and read into read in for the minutes. And the minutes what, what will the, be what the next step is with these documents, so we have it in the minutes. Okay, but but the minutes of the school board meeting, um, wherein they all voted to authorize the chair. Yeah. And granting her the the signature authority. Do do we want to add those minutes? You could you could certainly track them down. Right, and okay. attach them to this, that's a good idea. I think that would be good. Yeah. Okay. It's just yep. a challenge 10 years from now or something. Okay. Yep. And Denise was signing this, you were free act indeed, and the free act indeed of the town and counties. Yes. Okay, all set. I will um, make copies of these on the machine over here for myself. Okay. And I will leave the originals uh, with Judy. We've talked about that she is going to record them. In the land records. In the, yes, it gets recorded in the land records. Okay. And should we be sending a copy of these signed documents to the school or to the supervisory or to them both? Um, or not bother. <laughs> They're public, they can come get them. <laughs> I will send a copy to Brian Monahan. Okay. 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 Copy. I'll also send a copy to Susanna Culver, just an electronic copy okay. for the records right. as well. Right. Okay. All right. I'd, I'd like to thank Jim for all his help on this because this would never have happened without That's his right. help. So thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. much. Awesome. We really appreciate it. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Jeff. Fun, Thank Jeff. you. Yeah. All right, you ready to move on? Um, thank you, Select Board, for supporting this endeavor with the school. Yes. Well done. Major lift. It's awesome. Uh, it is awesome. Right. Yeah. It's it really, good? it's it feels, it feels, it feels right. really good. It feels right. The greatest concern has been away. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a volunteer for the Development Review Board. Thank you so much, Art, for stepping up. We really appreciate it. Um, there, if you need a hard copy of the zoning regs and the town plan, um, let, that would be helpful. Let us know because not everybody wants to sit in front of a computer and read stuff all day. Uh, yeah, it would be helpful if a hard yeah. copy was available. Okay. I'm sure I have a few things to read up on. <laughs> yeah, just a few. Just a few. Um, I, and I, I know you know Walt, and he's filled you in. I thought I saw Walt here. Yeah, right? he was here. Okay. So the Development Review Board only meets when a, a permit, an application is filed because you need a permit to do something outside what the zoning administrator can actually do. And I think that um, I'm an alternate on the DRB. I, I, I remember reading the <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they don't meet that often. I think it's I probably five to eight times a year, ten times a year. So it's not like they meet every week or every month. It, it kind of comes and goes in spurts. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't know if everybody knows. Art, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody, and we can introduce ourselves? Um, I'm Art Edelstein. I live on Bain Moley Road. As um, Mr. Graybat said, I'm always selling things on, on Front Porch 4. <laughs> um, <laughs> musical musical instruments. Instruments. No, um, so I've been, just background, I've been up on that hill for 30, 30 years we've been living there, across from the I saw we good friends, you see, because we mm -hmm. could stay up, both of us been up there for 30 years. Ago, right. Right? Um, uh, you may have to read me in the Times Argus on the weekend. I do uh, music reviews. I've been teaching at Champlain College since 2003. Uh, I'm not teaching in the fall, and I think I'm, I may be just ending that um, uh, affiliation. Maybe time. To, I keep getting old. They keep staying the same age, and I keep getting older. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird that's how that that's happens. That's gotta be unnerving. Uh, yeah, they're they're always twenty. Right. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so, um, and I haven't volunteered before, um, <coughs> but freeing up some time and thinking that maybe it is time. You know, I live here. Thank you. We really uh, appreciate it. Um, you know, it's it's funny. I don't own property here. Um, March does, but I own property in Plainfield. Very odd situation. Uh, but um, I vote here. That's good. Yeah. And so it is time to, you know, to start. You just shack up here. Is that what you do? That's that's it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> He's a good neighbor. That's an old term. Yeah, yeah. right. Youngsters like you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I just decided uh, when Walt mentioned it, I said, "Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, why not?" And yeah. so I'm looking forward to uh, making sure we don't build any uh, high-rise buildings in Cal's and uh, <laughs> things like that. You think? <laughs> Who knows? That's a concern. Yeah. <laughs> And I look forward to starting. Well, thank you very much for stepping up. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. I'll make a motion to appoint um, Art Edelstein to the position at the DRB, and I'm not sure what time, which um, term. I was looking, I was looking, and to probably put him in in the term that Steve Owens had. I had made a note, but I don't think. Um, yeah. Oh no. To replace Trey Martin, and Trey Martin's term expires in 2023, I think. Just four a, years. Yeah. Right. Four, four years. years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is that a, that's a friendly amendment to your motion? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a second? second? All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. We'll get you hard copies of okay. the zoning regs and the town plan. Okay. I can just get them. Just call me and I'll walk across the road. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Art. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks very God. much. All right. And I'll let um, I'll let the DRB yeah. know that we have appointed you so that the next time they have a hearing, they can let you know. That's You're nice. free to stay. You know what you know. No, I understand, but I haven't eaten dinner. Good. So oh, Take care. And you didn't bring dinner for everybody. I didn't eat dinner either. I, we thought about it, but <laughs> <laughs> it was all leftovers. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank all right. You. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Thank be, you. Be well. Enjoy. Thanks, Art. We'll see you around. Yep. Okay, next up, Ms. Berber, delinquent text. Are we not doing Elizabeth or Casey? No, she's not available. She's out of town. We'll have to do her the next time. Okay, um, Sandra, take it away. Which one do you need me to? Thank you. Uh, we're doing delinquent tax collector stuff first. Yeah. Play by numbers tonight. Okay. 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 Something like the length of tax, Dell tax, six twenty nineteen. Well, that's a spreadsheet. It's second from the yeah. bottom of PDF. Second, yeah, do the PDF one because the other one yeah. comes up weird. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not that one. Uh, yeah. That one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
And this is the front page of the delinquent tax report. It's up Thursday, the 20th. Behind it is the list of taxpayers um, parcel and parcel numbers, which correspond to the first left-hand column, 1 through 26. Mm -hmm. In uh, green are amounts of delinquent taxes that I would present to the Board of Abatement for possible abatement due to the relatively small amount owing and the cost of collection. In orange is the amount of taxes that at this point are not likely paid without turning them over to a lawyer. However, we still have until the 30th as the Final date uh, with uh, final date by which we are looking for those taxes to be paid. Since the production of this report, number ten has uh, contacted me and has stated that full tax amount would be paid in full. They would be putting the check in the mail that day or the or Friday. Number ten, you said. Number ten. Okay, and number 15, was it a, was it the person or the attorney that called and told you? It that? was the person or a relative of the person. Okay, the first name was not the name on the tax bill. <clears throat> so they're planning to pay by the thirtieth. Yes. Uh, in white are taxes that are likely to be paid by September 2019, but not necessarily likely to be paid by June 30th. In particular, <coughs> note that numbers 15 and 16, um, that taxpayer contacted me and um, talked about additional financial, ongoing financial hardships that are expected to be resolved by various liquidation of assets and uh, selling other assets. Uh, although I will say that he, that the taxpayer would not, was uncomfortable committing to having the entire amount paid by that time, but thought that a good portion of it would be paid, and perhaps partial payments could be made between now and then, but I did not get a good sense that that would happen. So, all right, so we'll see what happens on June 30th. And, so my recommendation- the taxpayer reached out to me as well, said some more things. So the, my recommendation <laughs> on the strength of that contact, mm -hmm. um, and on a previous contact, I'm actually recommending no action to the board um, based on the strength of that contact. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, it, it is m my thought to the board that if this is not paid in full by September, then we'll see. the board needs to consider it further and see mm -hmm. what okay. needs to be done. Um, I, let me see. Hang on. 17 and 18 second. are in that same. Well, one, so all the just whites. Grab. Right, all the whites are the same thing. Mm -hmm. So number 21 called today and indicated that he would call back maybe with a payment plan. He was working on it. Uh, there was no call back by that person. Uh, but you talked to that person on today. I, that person talked to Judy and said he would call back, but did not. Okay. So uh, the third color, as it were, in blue, uh, that check came in after Ooh. the production of this report, and I was able to hmm. just blue that. Where's that property? Let's go back. That. Uh, I, I don't know where that property is. It's in been to several banks, and it's in Cal's. 
I'm sorry, I don't have the uh, property location off the top of my head. Let's see, is it on the Thanks for that, Rose. <laughs> just, just make a That's show. helpful. <laughs> no, I don't have that off the top of my head. I cannot answer that. Palace Vermont. Mm -hmm. So, the, the takeaway from this report is that there's a significant amount of taxes outstanding that realistically may need to be turned over to the tax attorney. Um, at this point, between now and the 30th, it is possible that we will have contact from these, uh, from the parcel owners, and I am inclined to pretty much say pay half and let's make a payment plan over the next six months for the remaining half mm -hmm. since it, we're into month seven after the last due date, but we'll have to see. Yep. There may be um, considerations that we do not know about that the taxpayers are not sharing with us and mm -hmm. that would be of importance to the board be, before rejecting a payment plan mm -hmm. other than a top-heavy payment plan. Uh, so the significance really of our delinquent taxes is our uh, bottom line and we are at this point on the general government side negative nineteen thousand dollars nineteen thousand one hundred dollars give or take a few cents uh, i have preliminary preliminarily explored how we may by statute have to deal with that i will be talking with the accountants in a few weeks if it becomes a legal question then we will reach out to Jim, it may be that we need to raise that amount of money in taxes when we set our tax rate. Um, why don't we want to let the um, general fund absorb this? If it was two or three thousand dollars, maybe that would be a great. Uh, that would be a reasonable you option. That fund, um, we call that fund. The fund balance. The fund balance. Fund balance. Yeah. And, but I think at this number, the board may want to reserve um, uh, a decision on whether or not you want to let the general fund uh, <coughs> absorb that balance. We really want to keep a certain amount of money in that general fund to cover mm -hmm. our first three months of operation, if possible. That's the recommendation. That's the recommendation of the auditors. Correct. Right? Sullivan and Powers. Yes. So, can I ask you a question? Well, yes. So, between, so if we're closed on Friday, so let's say on Monday when we get here, it's going to be July 1st. This year technically ends on June 30th. So, what if payments come in the mail when you open it on July 1st? But they're they were probably really. Res How does that does it go into the new fiscal year? Well, it can't go into the bank account before. I mean, it can't. It, they, it is impossible for them to be deposited within the fiscal year. So we would. So the would auditors would either push them back because we are on a modified cash basis. Mm -hmm. um, or if NIMRIC works that way, we can date them all as received on or by June 30th. Right. right. So I'm and just it's just a matter of managing how we reconcile mm -hmm. the bank account with the receivables, which right. it actually can be done. Can be done. Yeah, because I'm thinking, you know, the deficit, 19000 is, is, you know, enough, but we may have some checks come in you may. to make it less. And very, you very well may. And the one check that, the one promise of payment is, is almost $5,000. Right. <coughs> so the, the 3875 that we received? That is, and that's already been taken off this bottom line. That's in the okay. bank already. Okay. So which other one are you talking about? Uh, number 10. Uh, that was promised to be put in the mail full Thursday or Friday. And I did receive today number 28. It's a small amount, $132, mm -hmm. but um, I, but it's here. So mm -hmm. that $19,000 could um, go down, could go down by an, a significant amount, maybe. Mm -hmm. well, we'll see, but I, that was my question. I didn't know if you could, because um, really it's, it's, it's very imperfect. Mm -hmm. If you can change the date in the receiving module 
but in the accepting module, sometimes it doesn't work very well, and that mm -hmm. could be something that we could work with Nimic, Nimic and the accountants mm -hmm. to with. To yeah, that. I didn't, you know, it's imperfect, mm -hmm. but um, we'll see what happens between okay. now and then. Okay. As far as highway is concerned, so that's the state of the um, of general government that we're not in bad shape. We projected between a twenty and thirty thousand dollar deficit, depending on how uh, delinquent taxes rolled in. So mm -hmm. we are under that projection, and um, and that's good. Mm -hmm. Will uh, the, the board will decide at some later meeting? what the best course of action is to deal with that deficit. We have plenty of time. And nobody's said anything about thinking about abating, asking for an abatement, they don't? Of these, of these taxpayers, no. Okay. What's the sum total of unpaid taxes at the 100? It is it's $65,669.50 minus 132.14. Oh, oh, okay. And then maybe minus the four almost $5,000. <clears throat> yeah, actually, uh, yeah, we're just we're just a titch over $60,000. Uh, that 3875.41 is in. It's it was received, so that would reduce that $65,000 number. Uh, Sandra, would I am I right in your in understanding that if you hear from other people in the orange you're just going to flip them to the white category, generally, based on the same criteria you use to I, I'm create some to, whites here. I'm going to try and treat every taxpayer the with, with the same criteria. Right. Um, and again, we ju really just, if there has been no contact, no payment, I have no idea what variables are right. going to, what we're going to hear. Right. Um, it is not unlikely that we're just not, that it is not unlikely that a portion of these folks are just simply not gonna contact us at all. Right, if they haven't already. Right, And you have varying degrees of confidence in the ones who have. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But for now, they're all in the white. The ones that, I, that are likely to be paid are in white. Okay. And they are ones who are on payment plans or on the strength of their contact. The strength of their character. <laughs> well, on the strength of their contact. Well, strength contact. of their character. <laughs> um, characters. Yeah. <laughs> are, is there anybody you've heard from that you don't put in that strength of contact and you've actually left them in orange? Uh, well, orange is no contact. Orange is no contact, no payment. Right, okay. So hang on. So the one person who did leave a message today who is in orange, he's in orange, and he, he did not call back. Okay. And so that's the number. And, and that number. is number 21. And, and right. that number 21 has been in he, this we, rodeo before. We, right, because we've done this before, and then it's all of a sudden at the very last minute when he gets paid after it's already at the attorney's office. So that's where we are. It, it didn't burn us quite as bad as we were worried about, and uh, I think we have a good shot at recovering by hook or crook, really, by voluntary payment or a tax sale of um, yeah. a vast majority of these. By the way, this report or a, an, an amended version of this report is required in our FY19 audit and will be uh, produced for the auditors. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it, it would just be this front page. Okay. They don't really have an interest in who, no. N number two is, the, is you had a conversation that it really was completely not productive. It, it was it, I, it was a personal conversation. It was an invitation to come back with a plan. It, it, it was a very welcoming invitation. Mm -hmm. Give me something. Give me something. Please right. give me something. Give me something. Tell me anything. And uh, it, uh, that person left with no indication that a plan would be forthcoming. Mm -hmm. So it stays in orange. Yeah. No, it stays in. No, that one's in orange. That's the one that's an exception. There was a contact, but it was so right. not productive. Right. It, yeah. 
Yes, there was no pro there was not any promise of payment at all mm -hmm. in that conversation. A simple acknowledgement of owing was all that uh, floated to the top in that conversation. We're not having a break. <laughs> Never. Like to Never getting a break. <clears throat> okay. Well, Sandra, thank you very thank much. You. I know you're you're welcome. Welcome. I've had one conversation, and I know. So and you're doing a lot. So these conversations are really difficult. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe that people do want to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. I, I have a, a strong belief in that, mm -hmm. and uh, and I do think that most people do want to pay their bills, mm -hmm. and that um, I I speak for the three of us in our office. We work very hard to make people feel welcome. Mm -hmm. There is to receive them with a smile, to receive their payments with a smile. There's no judgment mm -hmm. it, because there are very many reasons why right. folks are on this list and there's right. no judgment. So I really want the board to know that we are, um, when folks come in, they are respected mm -hmm. and up until now, almost any plan that made sense would have been acceptable, but at this point, I, I really think, on behalf of the board, I, I would like to be give a little more strength and structure mm -hmm. to plans for folks who might be interested in them. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm always open to hearing what's going on, and please, you know, if you hear something that you think is important, you would want to share it with the board and, and with me, because mm -hmm. we, you know. The tax sales are not the goal. No, no, no. I mean that's the last. That's the last resort. It really is the last resort. And right. just to refresh you, we did, we haven't done them for a couple of years. Once uh, the board, or me on behalf of the board, and or the board, in in conjunction with me, we can put together a payment plan. But once these parcels are turned over to the attorney. There is no further contact. The statute is clear. They mm -hmm. are, they can work out. Their only recourse is to discuss this with the attorney and that person's only recourse is to accept full payment of the taxes and mm -hmm. costs associated. Yeah, because by the time it gets there, it's too late for a payment plan, is that right? Well. Yes, at this point, but yes, because you do not want this level of delinquency to snowball mm -hmm. from year to year to year. And yeah. since we have a few repeaters, I'm recommending to the board, and the board has the, always the final decision. Mm -hmm. I would not turn any of these folks over to the attorney without without oh, yeah, your absolutely. final say, go. Well, and we're following up. We have a delinquent tax policy that we're following, so we're treating everybody equally and fairly. So, you know, as I said, a, a, a lot of this is just the, the strength of the communication, mm -hmm. what is going on with their lives, and. I think I know this board well enough that we really want to work with folks if they're having a hard time. With, you know, mm -hmm. it's all carrot, no stick. It's what we want. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. thank yeah, you. It's never easy to turn them over, for sure. No. So, thank you. Nice job. Thank you. All right. Um, Was I on for one more thing? Yeah, well, we want to go through some of these other Budget. things, right? Clarification of the reserve. We wanted to do, um, I talked with Sandra, and we had made a motion on May 28th about the use of the town hall reserve fund. And I was talking to Sandra about it, and it's a little un unclear. We're not paying off any debt. We just want to be able to move 10000 from the town hall reserve fund to be used for the town hall renovation project but leaving the money when it, the money, um, well, that's when, when the new fiscal year starts, there will be another 10,000 put in there for the town hall reserve fund for future maintenance that we yeah. want to make sure stays in there for that purpose. So yeah, I think the, that motion that you're talking about, yeah, that's when, right here. We, when we say the reduction of debt just for posterity's sake, really, I think 
perhaps a better phrase would be for expenses of the project because we're not going to send the bank $10,000 to reduce the principal on the debt. We're using $10,000 for the expenses right. from the town hall renovation. So that when invoices fund. come in, you can use that money to pay those invoices. Correct, and right. John John's comment for someone's comment in the, mi in the minutes was, well, how, we just would like to know how much is being used. So currently we used, we used the Town Hall Reserve Fund uh, for $3,430 uh, $3, worth of expenses. That was a negative on your balance sheet, if you might remember that mm -hmm. from the last time. Uh, prior to that, you had used $1,600 of that fund before the loan and donations started coming in. So it would be up to you whether you want to combine that, call that $10,000, or just really focus no, I on think, I think the idea after the fact that 3430 and go forward from there. In, in attending the, the meetings, my understanding is we would like to be able to use $10,000 from that fund going forward to pay off any invoices if we fall short from yeah, the, from I the think loan and donations. So debt is not so much debt as it is Ex ongoing. Expenses. Yes, yeah, payment expenses. of expenses. Yeah. Expenses. Just well, we're able to pay the and bills. And we had this idea of debt in our mind because the expenses are getting bigger than the budget or something like that. Right, but right now if we can, have, if we can use that 10000 and then we'll right. see how much is left in there after that's gone, taking into account we don't want to use the 10000 that's going to come up, that's going to go in there on fiscal year 20, see how much is left to see how, get a, we'll get a clearer picture of the budget. Donna uh, sent me an email that suggested that regardless, the FY 20 appropriation into the Town Hall Reserve Fund right. in the amount of $10,000 would not be touched for project, ongoing project expenses, but would Remain there for ongoing maintenance and upkeep. Yeah, that's what I just said, right? Yeah, that's after July 1. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> so that's not in your minutes anywhere. That's not that $10,000. That right. is a separate thought process of the board. Right. And I don't think we need to. You might make want a, to. I don't think we need to make a motion or anything on that right now. No, yeah. it's in the yeah. minutes. I would just make a copy of the minutes and stick that in a notebook for, mm -hmm. for posterity because there would be no way to find that. Mm -hmm. I would. Right. You, you, would, you would want that. So, I have a notebook with our reserve funds and so comments and thoughts about how the, what the board's intentions are at any particular time with a fund. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere to log that in. So I would just take a copy of these minutes and put, them in the notebook. And put it in that notebook with that mm -hmm. fund. Okay, so we need to modify or make and amend the motion that was made on May 28th. Or, I guess, restate it, yeah. Do you want, I mean, you made the original one. Do you want to do it or do you want? Uh, I mean, I think I said so moved. Um, so when you instead of, right, for the reduction of debt, um, to pay expenses on the town hall project. That's what we were saying. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So your motion is the same except for saying for 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 the use or expenses of the project right. instead of reduction of the debt. Right. Okay. Right. I know. Right. Right. <laughs> Second. Okay. Any further discussion or clarification? Does that work for you, Sandra? Yes, I, I, again, I just think, I, okay. I, I'm just thinking to, co to cover the intention of the board as yep, clearly as possible going forward so that it's easy to figure out what it was mm -hmm. that you wanted to do. I and if it. the accountants ask, well, right. why was this expense posted here? I can open up the <clears> minutes <throat> mm -hmm. without a big, without any difficulty mm -hmm. and point to that decision. Okay, are you ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Clarity we shall have. Yeah. That's always good. 
Okay. Um, did you, you had also sent us some budget update stuff. Um, I, I really just kind of wanted to get th this. You probably don't want to deal with that tonight, but I wanted to give you a flavor for how the delinquent taxes yeah, no, impacted right. our balance sheet and where we were or mm -hmm. are actually at the end of this fiscal year. Okay, now um, we have a, Toby sent us the highway budget and you said you've worked closely with Toby and those figures are we correct. The highway and I have had a great time working very closely together over these last three weeks. Um, and what I do have is, and what Toby doesn't have because I was doing a lot of this toward the end of the day is where they actually are after this payroll. Mm -hmm. So the, their bottom line was 30,799 cents on page three of their um, budget status report. You have a highway budget status report. There it is. Yeah. And after this last payroll, which you have in your stack, they're now at 24,949.27. Okay, they're there where? Oh, so you see where I've circled that $30,000? Why, why does mine look different? Why does no, mine that's a different document. No wonder. But it says highway. Yeah. There's a couple of them in there in the folder I saw. I opened that one first. Oh, that's this one part of highway. Oh, stop that. So, so the, this is the last page of their budget status report, and where ours says negative nineteen thousand dollars, theirs says a positive thirty thousand dollars, and that was produced on Thursday prior to running the payroll today for this week, the last payroll of this fiscal year. Okay. So that $30,000 is now $24,949. Okay. So roughly $25,000. And that's the money that they would, that would get transferred into the town, the highway reserve fund? Yes, I am told there will be one more uh, highway order with a date in this fiscal year oh, okay. so that money will be further reduced and then the balance will be rolled over into the capital the highway capital mm -hmm. equipment fund. so we don't have we don't know what that we do not I am simply told it will come okay minus another invoice okay and then whatever's left will go into the reserve fund yes so I can just when Toby comes in he will not have the benefit of this most current number mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, he's on the agenda I, right I, you want to leave that so I thought yeah I, I would leave that yes that would be very helpful thank you okay and then um, anybody else have any questions on budget stuff or looking at those figures for Santa are we, we're not going to make any kind of, this is just a clarification. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. just an update. And then we have the um, internal control document that Sandra sent. Yes, the statute requires that this internal control document that has been put together by the state auditors mm -hmm. uh, be presented to the select board by June 30th. Mm -hmm. No action needs to be taken. You have a full agenda tonight. I think if the record could reflect that you received it and mm -hmm. then we can review it later if you choose. I did, did anybody else review it? I reviewed it, it looked fine to me. If we can sign off on something and not have to carry it forward, then we won't forget. It. <laughs> oh, I won't. <coughs> you will, but I'm the auditors. Uh, I mean, you you have another at least one more board meeting before the auditors come in, and they'll right. just you know check the box that this was done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked fine to me. Anybody else look at it, John? I did not look at it. Are there any questions or any things that we should be aware of before we sign it? 
Any oh, red yeah. flags? I didn't look at it. I, don't, I didn't see anything that stand, stood out to me. Did you, Cliff? It's more yeah. like a survey. It's at the end of the day. It's, it's, yeah, it's just yeah. making it's sure just that your, you have your you're checking well. as best you can. And right. That we're and actually we've it's improved because we have Nemrec doing the monthly audit now. Yeah. Correct. So we've improved. <clears throat> Do we know if any of us have attended financial trainings? I have a, long, a while ago. So you could change that. But I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I have, but you didn't know that. I did. But I do now, so right. we can put that on the next audit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which can I just that? make one little pitch to the select? We're talking about trainings. Just by way of information, not asking. Um, I went to an HR training. Uh, that was sponsored by the Vermont League and one takeaway I did have and not to add to your list or to your to your multitude of tasks but the one takeaway um, that I thought was important to bring back is that we really do need to update our personnel policy yeah, and we, we asked about it yeah yeah so put that in the back of your heads for some time yeah. perhaps a smaller committee of the select board might mm -hmm. be interested in working with me and VLCT offers a multitude of resources mm -hmm. including a model policy and labor legal labor specialists to review it at a discounted rate yeah. so just throwing that out at you thank you do you know when the last revision was or when we of the personnel policy yeah. 2016 yeah 16 yeah. Well, three years. I mean, we, it's time. That's that. I know it's time, but before For, that, right, we, we didn't, didn't even have one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's on the list. Yeah. Good. No, appreciate that resource. Yeah. They can help. I think they can help. Right. Are you willing to move to authorize your set board chair to sign on behalf of the law? Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. So, do you want me to? Do you want you want me to sign? Yeah. And date today, and uh, that with the motion, I think that covers it. All right. Now we can give it to the auditors when they come. Well, it will go in the audit file. I have 26 points of information to. 26. Yeah. yeah. To gather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so are you, are you just want this? Yes, please. All righty, there Thank you, you are, so Madam. Thank you. Me. Thank you for all your attention to detail and diligence and getting everything right and letting us know when we didn't get something right. Thank you. Well, we're doing good, I think. We are doing good. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Senator. And if you don't mind, Thank I you. just want to show Alfred this, this most updated Yep. Version. So I'm going to be more today. So you are. Oh. Um, some meetings are off schedule, some meetings are down on schedule. This is slightly ahead today, huh? Yeah. And then what is left on but the board? We have to talk about Cherbill again. Come out. I'm just looking at one more. Someone get the on the orange on that Somebody did? Peter sent some. Ugly photos. I didn't. Who did? Somebody is. Yeah. Somebody we know. I don't know. Oh my. No idea. I don't. You recognize those arms? Yeah. 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 But we can't get we can't get in a discussion another hour discussion about Turbo and make sure we can. Other people, Everyone say yeah. Everybody wait <laughs> forever. Sandra beat us too. That was a wild. All right, we're a little ahead of schedule. I thought that was the same thing. I assume yeah. Toby's coming? Oh, oh that's the I heard photo. That's my photo. The John. Table, I had this the, I thought we should post in the uh, office because this is written by Victoria Weber. Oh, is that the one Peter's been talking with? Who I'm make, I was, I'm making this movie with oh, Peter uh, with Victoria and it's, yeah, and that piece is virtually done. We're almost finished with it. Very instructive about this subject. And there's agreement. We will find agreement that there wasn't before. <laughs> you were not exactly. Yeah, it's some nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Yeah. Well, I, did you get whatever Sandra had for you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
there is a copy of a, all right, never mind. We'll deal with that tomorrow. Okay. Never mind. Let's sure. go forward. Oh, okay. And this will stop that. Thank you. I assume Toby's coming. There you are. Okay. Um, it's not quite eight o'clock yet. That's what I hate about putting times on the agenda. But I felt compelled after the last meeting that yeah. one was so long. You didn't sign this page. Oh, page two. Did I check them off? Oh, okay. So I, I have looked at it. Can we can we do like an eight thirty item? Uh, technically, you're not supposed to move. Oh, in. right, because people might. Care. Depends on, I think, what it is. I think we could do um, signing the COP contract and the Humane Society contract. Seems more like the risk. Yeah. Um, I'm so the here's the COP contract. Show up. And the COP contract and the Humane Society money is in the budget. What she said? I said unless any barking dogs decide to show up. Oh, I'm I just feeling punchy. I could have got a couple. All right, so what about the um, COP contract? This would be effective as of July 1 because we don't have money in the budget until then. We talked about this when we were setting the budget. To the amounts that we discussed yeah. and were approved. What so. was the amount? I, I, I didn't see that. Um, it probably was in an earlier folder. Yeah, it's right in the town. It's right in the town. We talk a lot about it when we were building the town. Uh, well, um, Did we give them any this year, or it's only to start July we don't, 1? We, well, the budget, new budget doesn't start until July 1, mm -hmm. so there isn't any money to give them until mm -hmm. then. Right. No, for the other they didn't start the project provide. part right. this year, part next year. They haven't started it yet. It's, I know it's in here. I've seen it. Oh. All right, that's highway. Um, it should be here. Oh, um, ten thousand, and that's over like three years to do this. Okay, is there a motion to approve this? I don't know who all has to sign this. Let's see. So move. Customer. Second. We'll just have to authorize the chair to sign on our yeah. behalf. <laughs> what you normally don't. Folks, do you want to authorize the chair to sign? Yes. The Sharon's motion. My second. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I'm not going to sign it tonight until I ask Judy for sure what I'm supposed to sign. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Denise, there's a couple more that you didn't sign. Must be new ones. Thank you. This is good for you. That kind of year. All right, let's talk about Central Vermont Humane Society. Um, they were late, obviously, in getting this to us because this contract is for January 1, 2019 through December 31, 2019. And I saw this and I asked Judy, who talked to Erica at the Humane Society, and she said they were late getting these out, which is obvious. Um, but the amount of the contract hasn't changed from this year to last year. So we need a motion to. This is the contract to. To for to take the stray animals to the Humane Society. Okay. okay. Um, is it seven hundred? Okay. Is that in the contract? It probably is. But it's probably. Those are going to find it in the budget. It's hundred dollars a day for canine. Um, I know, there must be a total amount in here somewhere. Maybe not. Well, 
probably not. We set right. a budget if it's a line per based upon if it's a per unit. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's per, per it's per animal. It's like fifty dollars for a cat, a hundred dollars for a dog. We just got a, there's an invoice in there right now for like six hundred dollars, but I don't know what our bottom line budgeted amount for this is. And that wasn't really a question. Right, your question no, the contract. Yeah. Oh, so I'm making mention that we signed the contract uh, and authorized any staff to have the supplement. Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing no. $610. That was the one that's in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know why they're so late. I'm getting things out there. The two that you didn't sign, I'll leave right on the top. Okay. All right, so we got that. Um, all right. All right, back to highway. Sandra, don't, can you, I'll, I'll shut the door and lock it just in case you have more stuff to put in here. I think I'm gonna run to the girls. Yeah, run in my legs. Uh -huh. <laughs> can you get back? Oh. oh. <laughs> I know that feeling. Okay, okay. All right. Um, Road Commissioner Operations Manager. Thanks again, Sandra. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's talk about the one ton truck. Do you have some final figures yeah. now? They are they're going to trade for 18000 They're going to give us 18000 For the whole of the one ton. Is that good? What's the book on that? <coughs> what year is that? 2016. Miles <coughs> 40. What did you say? It was a 2016? 2016. Of selling it. Right, getting ready. Right yeah. Right. And what was the what was the price on the new one? Can you tell me again? Uh, the new one altogether was one hundred sixteen thousand. And that's a lease. Yes. Lease purchase, right? Lease purchase. Right. And that's for how many years? It's a two thousand fifteen Ford five fifty truck. Two thousand fifteen. Okay, um, and what was, what's the payment on this going to be, a year? Uh, it did, yeah, you'd have to talk to the lease people, it depends on the interest rate. I mean, it's a, if you took a five-year loan and it cost you 100000 it's going to be 20000 a year plus interest. Okay, so this is how long of the lease, then? I'm just thinking five years. That's five years? The, that's how long the truck is in, in service. Okay. All right. Anybody it's else? The warranty anything? period. Uh, the extended warranty would be for five years. It is for five years. You can get a seven, but we don't want to stretch trucks to that that level of truck to seven. 
We've okay. already had problems with those things falling apart in much less than seven years. Okay, so the plan would be so that so that, five so years. that one ton truck instead of the big trucks is going to be a five year cycle. Right, versus uh, seven, seven year on the other side. Big trucks, okay. and we buy a seven year extended warranty on the big trucks. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that for me. I, I missed the quote on that. Would you say it again? What the um, what the trade in offer? The was? trade in is eighteen thousand. Thank you. And the purchase price is one hundred sixty. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any more questions or anything more you want to tell us about the truck? Oh, uh, yeah. We are looking at I, we. So one of the things that came up today talking to the salesman is. If we go with international, their truck is not going to be completely built until the end of October. And they may not see it for a month after that, so it might not show up until the middle of November. And then it's going to go to the plow and body shop for another month. So we could be looking at the middle of December before we saw that truck. So in the meantime, would we continue to use the one that you had the frame fixed? Right, we would continue to use that. Yeah. So, is any of that equipment transferable to the? No, it's used up. It's not worth recycling. Um, we are looking. Chevrolet makes the, the same truck, and we've started talking to them locally to see if we can get that same truck in Chevrolet instead of International, and get it sooner. And Alfie has some information about that. He talked to them today. Yeah. So they. With the original quote from International, they combined the whole truck and equipment. Mm -hmm. So I don't have the breakdown of the equipment. So it's hard for me to compare the two. But the price I got from uh, Cone Chevrolet is fifty-five six hundred. Say I'm sorry. I'm fifty-five thousand six hundred. And that's just for the cabin chassis, not for the plow and body. So I, I, I need to break that down, break down the, the equipment number mm -hmm. to be able to compare cabin right. chassis to cabin chassis. Uh, but Chevy can get them here soon. Yeah. This one truck that I'm looking at, they ordered a while ago. It's due in any time. Um, they ordered it for another company, but the company is not sure if they want it now. Mm -hmm. Which is good for us because it's, it's the spec that we were looking for. Oh. Um, and it will be available sooner for us. Like how much sooner? Because you'd still have well, to send it in to get it, the plow and all that right, stuff went on, right? In, in September. Oh, okay. We would land here in September. And then so like three months earlier. So essentially, we're just seeing if, if Chevy can provide the same exact truck only as a Chevrolet, and we'll get the pricing on, on what the package looks like, just so you know. And it's the same thing as a lease? It would be a lease, yeah. I mean, you guys are going to go to the lease company that you have now. Right. OK. We just have to figure out what the total package price is. Yeah, because I know you're w looking for us to kind of make a decision and approve it tonight, correct? Because there was the issue that maybe this truck would be gone and sold to somebody else or something, right? Right, well, well the, the, the crunch is, is getting a truck, decide on a truck, because you can't save a truck unless you commit to it. Right, I know, but this, you've been, a couple of meetings ago, um, you were waiting for us to make a decision because they were holding a truck for you. Right. So now you're talking about they were holding a truck for you, but maybe not going with that vendor, right? Right. So, well, they were holding the slot for the equipment. Because uh -huh. that's the biggest thing with, with, with buying the truck is you've got to get the equipment put on. Right. And those companies are so busy that you've got to, you know, like J&B or, mm -hmm. or Parks would save spots for, for, those, for the equipment to go on the truck. Okay. And that's what they were saving. Oh, I thought, yeah, I guess I didn't, I wasn't clear on what you meant. We well, were, we either were way. also talking about a truck. Yeah. You said they, we had ordered, they had ordered some number of trucks. And they, had, and they were going to be gone. Oh, okay. I thought they had put on one of them. Right. So the thing, the thing is, Clark's, who is the international dealer, 
has a certain number of trucks that are going to come to them. Right, that's what we were told. And they've not all been sold. So they still have two slots, two trucks that will come in October that no one has purchased yet. And that's the one that and those are the ones we were about. looking at. Okay. We haven't committed to them. We just said, okay, we're interested in there mm -hmm. waiting for us to make a decision. The problem still is when does that chassis arrive? So mm -hmm. if we miss their slot, the next time a chassis would be available is next April. So we would be out of luck if mm -hmm. we miss the slot. And the slot, when you say slot in this context, now you're saying we've got to get the chassis here, but if it if it arrives late for the slot, that means we don't get the plow and the... No, because essentially Clarks has already committed to Fairfield for a slot of them. So they've got a, com it's a combination that they've already put together. So each nice. of those trucks has this company, has this, this, slot, pack, this has package. A, it's a package ready to go. Right, yeah. and, and it's all set up and it's all... And they have the sum total package price for us. Oh, 116. Right. That was the 116. That's fitted up. Ready That's to go, ready to go down the, the way we want it. Right, right. exactly. So, we have an $18,000 trade. So why would we not want to... So well, well, that so price is, is so, minus so, trading. That price no, minus... 116 minus 18. Okay. It, so it would be about $98,000. Okay. For the total package. The only problem is that that chassis is not going to arrive until October, late October. Okay. We're looking now to see if we can put another package together with a Chevrolet that's going to be a sooner package. Now, I don't know what that co combination price is because we don't have the broken out price for that. But we were going for this style truck that it's, it falls somewhere and the range is this intermediate range. It's heavier than like a Chevy or a 550. Right. It's lighter than full on right. dump truck. So, this so that's one of the reasons we were. This chassis is the same exact one, only it's, it's the Chevrolet version of it. They share the same structure, the same frame, the same, same motor, same, same, motor, same transmission. Oh, it's the same company that makes it? Yeah, it's, it. it's, a shared, it's a shared design. So, uh, so International puts a hood on the front, Chevy puts a hood on Who's the front. Who's manufacturing it then? They're both it's manufacturing it. No, someone's making this. They're not having two product lines making the same. It's an Allison transmission. Yeah. And it's a Duramax. Duramax diesel motor. International can't put Duramax on the branding. They have to call it their own motor. That's what the Chevy dealer told me today. They can't put their name on it for whatever reason. On the Chevy. On the that international. Motor. They are calling it an international motor. But it's really but it's a Duramax diesel. But Duramax is international, right? No, no it's Duramax. Duramax is Duramax. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. You'll see I a Duramax see. In, a, see. in a Dodge truck, Chevy truck, okay. whatever. Duramax is it any good? Is it any good kind of engine? Well, it's got Dura in it. It must be Dura. 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 Based on the label, it must be. So, <coughs> if for some reason we can't, you guys just can't just approve for a certain amount. Well, well that's what I'm wondering. Kind of figure out what we do with the brand name and, and, and equipment. That's what I'm wondering. I don't know how people feel about that. So right now we have an offer of one sixteen with an eighteen thousand dollar trade. So, so you're going to go to the other one. So we'll go to the other one and see if we can make the same deal. If, they, if they'll take the trade and give us the package. The and and it's the same chassis, same heavy. Identical. Identical. They're, they're twins. Same. Okay. Yeah, born, but the born, timing is born born the same. Day. Right. The time. I think the timing is the critical piece right. here. And and we're worried about going into snow season with this truck. No, it just it, the sooner it gets here, the better for all of us. We just got to fill the frame, remember? And no, we got to fix. Right. But for how long will it last? But it's still it's still one of those things behind you know. Right. Right. Behind your mind, thinking about what could go wrong. And it's and it's 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 served its time. It's a five-year truck on the capital plan. It's really time for it to go. Oh, it's four, it's four years. Four years. We're only into the fourth year. It's four years of forty thousand miles. <coughs> yeah. So. Well, I'm, I, I, guess I don't see the difference. I don't see what the difference is. Yeah. Right, but and I'm not trying to argue with you. Just saying, but I was told by you. I'm not making this up that the folks who were welding said it's stronger than new. That's what you said. It. When it's right. done, it's better than when it came off the assembly line. Right. So, so that's not really an issue if that's an accurate statement. 
Um, so what would the board like to do? Well, it makes sense to have them look. <coughs> I, mean, I, I don't want to pay more. Are you inclined to set the amount not to exceed and if we can get more than 18,000 for trade-in, that's great. If not, we would like to get at least 18. What do you guys think? Yeah, I would think if we can get an apples to apples type situation, great. If it's different in any significant amount, clearly the board's gonna wanna review it again. I'm sure you guys wouldn't wanna move forward without us looking at it again. Right. And the fit up would be identical by the same company. The new truck, also keep in mind, the new truck is heavier built than the, than the trailer. Right, so that's why you're doing this. Size, right. Right. That's why it's a heavier yeah. duty truck for the last roll-up line. So if someone were to make a motion to approve a five-year lease purchase of this truck, whether it be the Chevy or the International, in an amount not to exceed $116,000, and take no less in trade of eighteen thousand dollars on the 2015-550. Would that work? What does the board think of a motion such as that? Maybe I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All right. Further discussion? I think we should have Katie read it back. Denise Wheeler made a motion to approve the five-year lease purchase of this truck, Chevrolet or International in an amount not to exceed $116,000 and take no less in trade than $18,000 on the 2015 F550. Mm -hmm. like so I'm just, just FYI, for, since we got this motion on the table, I'm, I just Googled Duramax diesel engine problems. Since we've had so many diesel engine problems, I Googled that. <clears throat> Duramax diesel is susceptible to fuel starvation and getting air in fuel lines water pump failure, overheating, injection, injector failure, injector harness chafing, glow plug failure concerns, this is what bothers me, aluminum cylinder head issues, turbocharger oil ingestion, blown head gaskets, big problems with the Duramax. So I guess, have you guys researched this motor to make sure this is, Something we want to get into after what we went through with the international. I mean, maybe we find this on all of it. I was just going to say, yeah, if you if you Google any motor made in made, you're going to find weaknesses. Even Cummins. Cummins have their weaknesses. Yeah. 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 Right. You want to go for something else, John? Well, I just I just, I'm asking if there's it says five fatal flaws. There's a lot of print on this. But just like there was on the international that we now are so glad we got rid of and we took a beating on. Are there other, I mean, I don't know more. I don't know. Anymore. I don't know if this is the best engine available, if this is going to be another problem. We're trading one problem for another. That's so all. I just, it's about due diligence. I guess mm -hmm. I'd like to know more. We got burned pretty bad on that international. I'm really sensitive about this. Do you have any experience with this kind of engine? We've never had a Duramax engine before. Which is it, the 6.6? .6 Whitley? Yes. Yeah, 6.6. It's the one they're citing. As the one with the problems. The one that's coming up. Maybe that's the one they make. <clears throat> but the same company makes it, and somebody, International, puts it in their trucks and calls it International, and Chevy puts it in their trucks and calls it Duramax. Duramax. I don't know. I mean, is there other trucks out there that not of that size that should be done with doing this. I don't know that Ford makes one, but mm -hmm. I mean I can I can do more research. I have no problem with that. The push was that we had a broken frame, I was without a truck. Right. Yeah I remember and that. And then we looked into we looked at the timing and it looked like it would work fine for the payments. So that made sense to okay let's look into a new truck. Mm -hmm. Thinking at that time we were going to spend thirteen to sixteen thousand dollars to fix a frame, right? right? We were going to buy a frame for that truck. Right. Yeah. Then it looked more feasible to buy a new truck instead of right. buying a new right. frame. Right. No, I remember all that. No, I, I'm right. still so supporting. Just, I just want to I'm make all sure. I'm fine with doing more yeah. research. Yeah. But I mean, we've got to we've got to know that's what we're doing. I mean. 
I think right. I think we've we've been consistent in our support with replacing truck Alfred. Yeah. And I think yeah. the specter of a broken frame is is a very good reason. I just want to make sure that we do our due diligence when we spend a hundred thousand dollars plus hundred and twenty thousand on a truck. Um, I don't want to get burned twice for the bad motor. I mean. Well, one of the one of the issues with the international was that the extended warranty gave up 30 days before the well. Right. We just right. Pay more attention to the fact that we need to look at the data of the extended warranties and be cognizant of that. And that's all in the plan now. But then we found out afterwards about the class action lawsuit right, on that 2012 and all the problems right. with that, that engine. Was bad that was bad yeah. motor. So the one with the broken frame is a 550, but this new one that we're quoting is a little bit bigger. GVW is fair amount bigger. Yeah. Can you guys? 19.5 or something. Yeah. They make a step bigger. Chevrolet makes a step even bigger. Than yeah. But but then you're into a, a, a longer time frame of waiting for the truck. Yeah. Because you have to order it. John and Sharon, do you want to share something that you're looking at with us? Well, I'm just looking at um, they they rate engines. You Google best diesel truck engines and they rank them. Yeah. And Cummins is second. Who's first? Detroit first. Well, is that they have a, they, is I that think a, there's one in here. I think it's a pickup truck motor. Oh. Uh, so are those in? Are they in? Are they definitely ranked? This is nine best. Nine best. What I was pointing right. out is that the Duramax is on that list of nine best. Oh, it is. Yeah. We're not. We're on the. List. Well, it's not clear that it's ranked. Yeah. It's not clear Just whether it's ranked nine. or whether it's well, list. When you're ranking oh. a, a motor, those motors fit, fit many different vehicles. Mm -hmm. They fit mostly bigger trucks. Like Cummings, <coughs> you're not going to put a Cummings motor in a, in a Chevy truck. Right. It's just not going to fit. Right. Well, they used to have Cummins in Dodge. Yeah. It's yeah. not in a, a small truck. No, in the Dodge. I know a guy who tried. <laughs> <laughs> you do? Yeah, my father in law. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, the manufacturer, you kind of got to go with what the manufacturer chooses for a motor to a certain degree. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. so do you want to look at Ford's? Yeah. Okay. No. You see what they have to offer? No. Well, there's only so many brands that we have to choose from. I like the idea of buying it from a local dealer right here in, you know, in this area. Right. This is Clark's service. is at Underhill. Yeah, if you've got service issues, it's bit too late. Right, exactly. That's my point. Power. And it's, you know, it's, it's good for their business to keep them in business. Um, all right, so where are we, John? Well, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I think, I think just a little bit of look at to make me feel better. We did our best. Okay, sorry. I think, <laughs> I think we're moving forward, my okay. opinion. Okay. But um, I just would like to know a little bit more about <laughs> the drivetrain. That's all. Do you want to make an amendment to the motion on the table? Yeah. And the motion reads. Katie. <laughs> sorry. Denise Wheeler made a motion, sorry about it a little bit in there, to approve a five-year lease purchase of this truck, Chevrolet or International, in an amount not to exceed $116,000 and take no less in trade than $18,000 on the 2015 F550 truck and Cliff M in second. Instead of this truck, or this, could it be a truck? Mm -hmm. A truck. A truck. And then and maybe and then it, and then it, or something. No, it lists. Is it maybe and instead of listing Chevy and International, can it be more broad than that? Because maybe maybe Ford does. Yeah, mid duty. Uh, what do they call it? Mid duty. Or one. I thought mid duty. I don't really care which brand you buy. <clears throat> if you want to look at other brands, we don't care. We just want to make sure. It doesn't and it's down. a 2019 or 2020. We'll minimize that. We're looking at 2019. Do I need to make this as an amendment to the original motion, or should I just change it? Just change it. Okay. okay. And you want to, and we want to change the motion to not say a specific brand, correct? So purchase of a mid-duty truck in an amount not to exceed one hundred and sixteen thousand. A 
2019 mid-duty truck. Well, you know, unless he finds a tiny tiny. I don't know that you have to put it. Anyways. We're overthinking this, guys. Um, all right. Are you okay with that change? I'm okay with the change. Is, is John's concern addressed with Well, that's that? what I want to know. I'm distracted here. I think John has articulated his issue. And that's in the, right. So are you okay with this now, with this motion? The motion includes researching. And no, no, that's what we're asking. If you want you to change the motion. I'm asking that there. the motion be amended okay. to re require that there be some uh, research done on on the durability of the engine to what end? or drivetrain, I'll say engine transmission for the truck that we're looking to purchase. To, to, to what end? To, yeah, I mean, what would you what do you want them to tell us? Come back and tell us. Let us know what what the what their findings are. What, before what before before they purchase the truck or. I don't understand. Oh, you. this this purchase is going to happen between now and the next select board meeting. That's what the motion is. Oh, yeah. Well, the motion is to approve it. One hundred sixteen thousand. Well, then I, I guess we'll rely on you guys to do that due diligence, and then it's going to be on you. Thank you. I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so you're good? taking out the the research. No, I'm expecting that they're going to perform right. that research and then make a judgment call. Right, but that's as part, of the, as part of the motion or just as a statement? As part of the motion. Okay. Okay. You got it, Katie? I think so. You want to reach yeah. back again, please? Sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I check out the... So the motion was amended by John Brabant. Do you put in the person's name who amended it? Mm -hmm. To include requiring the road commissioner and operations manager to perform their due diligence and research Is that on the drivetrain on the engine and drivetrain engine and drivetrain mm -hmm. prior to purchasing the truck okay and since john made the motion i made the original motion so i agree to accept the friendly amendment and I will second the amendment. This yeah. amendment, the amendment. All right. Is everybody clear now? As mine? <coughs> All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion approved. You're welcome. All right. Please Thank let you. us know what you find out. Yeah. yeah. If you can get, we're. The next regular meeting is July 8th. July 22, we're in East Montpelier for various meetings, so we won't be here on July 22, just so you and Toby know. Um, okay, budget update. Sandra gave you, um, Alfred, yeah. a budget update. I don't know if Toby has it. It's a little different than what um, <coughs> you had sent because there's another invoice or something that's supposed to be coming in. Sandra came up with after payroll. An amount of like 24, 24 something or other. She said, lower than that. Huh? It's probably 49, in the middle. 49. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you've got one more invoice or something that's I've coming got one in. More work one more work order. One more work order. Okay, and which will be deducted from that yep. remaining amount, and then whatever's left would go into the reserve fund. Equipment funds, right. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yep. yep. Okay. Anything else on the budget you want to let us know about, Toby or Alfred? No, nope, just hey, we are on your budget. Very good. Sand pilots will be done tomorrow. Wow. That will go on to the next year's budget. I'm thinking that we'll hold their invoices. Invoices until July one. But we are saying for it's, it's been a while. I know, it's too bad. It's like okay. beginning of uh, July and we have to think so about the stuff for, for, oh, they can for all the file. It's much bigger now. Stuff, yeah. for, the, stuff for the stuff for the winter. Nice. Right. Yeah. Is it bigger? It's it's a large file. Yeah. Come see it. Is it bigger than what you usually get? I don't think it's much bigger because the yard's only so big. We still gotta need we still need to get right. between the sand pile and the salt check. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. we can't go much bigger. Um, but it's 
this okay. is all up and that's what it is. Okay, so next let's talk about the Sam. Is that, did sure. Sam join us? Are you Sam? No, that's, no, that's Bill, Bill Davis. Bill oh, Davis. sorry, Bill Davis. Okay. So let's talk about the Enfield. I can't, I don't think I'm saying it right. Enrenfield? The East Hill Road right away. Right, the East Hill Road right away. Um, you were going to talk to him by tonight? Yeah. And what was the result of your conversation? Uh, he's prepared to do whatever we require him to do. He said that after, well, I didn't actually didn't get a chance to talk to him. Stopped there talking to his wife. Mm -hmm. He was coming back, but I didn't make it back in time to catch him. But he left me a message at my house saying that he's prepared to do whatever we require. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't want to blast latch because that gets expensive. But he will case it in concrete or whatever we want to mm -hmm. do. Um, I suggested to her, I said, maybe you've got water up above, because they own a lot, like 300 acres. Mm -hmm. They bought that farm up there? They bought the whole farm. Okay. So I said, maybe you've got water up above, you could just mm -hmm. grab it, you feed it down, just reestablish a spring or something. So they're interested in looking into that. But they still want to move forward with, with the right away. Okay, so what could the conditions be then? Uh, well, I think they need to be at least four feet down. Okay, so we want to say the water line, dig and bury water line at least four feet. Yeah, they're going to do that anyway. It's in their best interest. It's in their Otherwise, it won't, it won't be an icicle. Yeah. Not a water line. <laughs> Put some insulation right. board on top. Dig water line. To at least four feet. Okay. Um. Church time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> at least you know it works. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Any other? Anything uh, else? If they can't get four feet, they should case it in concrete, which is just put a thin layer of concrete over the top. So if we're excavating up there, we need right. concrete before we do the plan. Saves everybody a bunch of hassle. Okay, so unable to dig down four feet in case in concrete. Mm -hmm. Do they need to contact you before they seal the job up? Yeah, they, so uh, that's part yeah, of the that's, permit. I think that's written in the, in the permit. <coughs> okay. Back phone contact area upon completion. Anybody have anything else? Board members? All right, would there be a motion to approve this with conditions? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, I'll fill in the top of this form, but I'll send this around for signature. And then I will scan and email it to that and Mr. Enrenfeld and drop it for the office and all that. I think it's Aaron Feld. I don't know, it's E-N. I don't think that's correct. Did I write the same on there? It's E-H. Oh, that's what he's, oh no, it's E-H. Yeah. On there. And with the? It's Aaron Phil. Aaron. He's still building the schoolhouse, right? Still lives there. Yeah. All right, we voted, right? Mm-hmm. All right. <coughs> yeah, I already voted. All right, now on to, um, that was the one you remember last meeting, we talked about the Chris Neff, and he wanted to do something different with his um, permit than when it was originally approved. So we asked him to s file an amended application, which which he did, and they didn't really explain what he was doing. 
So I contacted him to say, this doesn't really, this is amended, it doesn't say amended to what? So you'll see the email exchange that I um, had put in the folder about what it is he wants to do. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm proposing, since this <coughs> amended application doesn't say it, that I would attach the email exchange which talks about it and he says what he's going to do to the amended approved permit if we approve it. Is it clear? Yeah. Yes. Like question too. Yes. It was clear in the email after I asked him a couple of questions because he went and he's going to, did you guys look at it, the email in the folder? I think I did, but I Yeah. After the says. initial request was submitted, the road commissioner recommended a 15 inch culvert to drain to the south. This would have required deep ditches to be dug. Um, they talked about the land along the driveway that naturally drains. Um, thus a culvert draining to the north along Max Gray was proposed. So it'd be less ditching on Max Gray Road. Um, and he said eventually when I asked him who it was, whose property then would the culvert be placed on? And he got back to me and said it's Paul McAller and Jessica Gerritsen. And he's given us the address and their names in the email. I don't know, did you find it? I don't know, know. Did we get that? Did we get that email? That I don't know. It's not in the, Maybe. It's not in the notes here. Oh. Denise, does this, uh, if we're going to approve this, so we have opportunity again for uh, uh, conditions? And so the conditions can set out the specifics that are in the email and you can attach the email. Right. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what I'm proposing. Yep. So I just want to be clear on what it is he wanted to do differently because I remember it was it was different enough that we felt like he needed to file an amended application. Mm -hmm. We didn't charge him for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I can put into the conditions what he has we're said. Going to incorporate by reference that right. email conversation right. as, as his as part of his application. Well, I can put it in here, plus I can attach the email. Yeah, I think it should be actually on this so that we are clear and and if there, because it sounds like there's a thread here, there's a piece here, there's a piece there, and the mm -hmm. email, and you want to make sure that Final. every yeah. single one of them gets captured. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. And then I also want to attach this because it's got it in writing from him what he yeah. plans to do. Okay. Right. That's different. But that becomes yeah. our con our condition. Right. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion to that effect? I make a motion that we approve the amended curb cut application for Chris Neff on Max Gray Road um, to include the conditions, the conditions outlined as in the. Um, Email. email correspondence that Denise has that will be listed on the actual permit. And a copy of the email will be attached. And a copy of the, the email will be attached. Okay. Has anybody got any? Did everybody go with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. All those in favor, <coughs> please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I'll get this out this week. All right. Um, I know I talked to Alfred when we had that, what was that storm and I talked to you, was it last Thursday? And you were running around, <laughs> poor Alfred, I caught him when he came back to the garage to get more cones. He was running around last Thursday night putting cones up here and there and everywhere. One of the projects and one of the problems that we've had a couple of times on um, Pekin and George or Peck Hill there, that area by the old Armstrong farm, mm -hmm. that's something that's on the horizon to be fixed this summer, right? Because the culvert can't handle the, the load. But are you guys, all the roads were like really great. And then we had the down, downpour and then we had all these gully, what do you call them, gully washes or? Gully washes. Yeah. So any other big issues from the storm? Uh, no. We, I sent a grader out today, patched up a bunch of the smaller washouts that we had. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're back to square one again as far as trying to get going on some of the projects. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was on Foster Hill today and there's a, they got a lot of wash out there. A lot of on it. 
our side. Well, both sides, actually. I don't know if it was. Yeah, I don't know if it was our side or Woodbury's side. I, on Friday. Oh, I was okay. A little, a little rough. Yeah. Well, the whole road needs to be graded. That that small one that has not been graded. Yeah. Uh, fully, so it's on the list. Okay. So we didn't have. I mean, we'll report the damage so that CDRPC has it for their collection of data in case there's FEMA for Washington County. Right. I think we put out like 20 miles of material, all scattered out throughout the whole town. Mm -hmm. It wasn't right. as it could have been, though. That's right. It could have been much worse. Oh, yeah. Well, and you guys worked, ended up working Friday. Working Friday. That's right. right. How did Apple Hill hold up that, that job? Did it work well? Yeah. It was like solid there. Good. Really? Yeah, the, work, the work that we've done in the last few years has all just weathered all of Save us money. Oh, yeah. Like David Singleton, that's all. That used to wash out every storm. Yeah. 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 This right. steep, steep slopes are the word that happened. Yeah. We've been working on all those ditches and mm -hmm. culverts and it's made a big difference. So the damage is you know. That's great. Making progress. It doesn't uh, seem like it sometimes, but I know, I know, I'm sure it doesn't. When you just get everything yeah. done and then a big storm comes and you have to go back and do it. Yeah, I get it. I'm Climate change. Yeah. Um all right. George Road Grant. Yep, we were awarded the grant. Here's the document that you need to sign. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And this is for this season? Well, it's for 18 months. 18 months. Do you think you'll get to it this season? Well, we'll put it out to bid until we have to get a design. I'm waiting for the, uh, the hydraulic study in order to, to decide what size it needs to be for design. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this alone with squash culverts again? Uh, Depends. It all depends on what the size of the hole is and what needs to happen and the pricing and all that kind of stuff. So we will hire Doug Newton to do the design and put out a, a bid document. And then we'll have put it out a bid. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, you know, how how soon we get that all done and still meet this season, which usually is the end of October. So mm -hmm. if, not, if not, we'll do it in the spring. And the, um, so the match is in kind at 10%, just so the board knows. Yeah. Cool. That's a good deal. Yep. All right. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the George Road Grant Agreement? So moved. BC2032. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, and did we buy a new chainsaw? Authorize the chair to sign. Yes, 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 we did. Power broom accepted. A what? It's a weed whacker with a with a broom on it. It's like a broom with some paddles. I is that what you use to clean the floor for the to the use to sweep up the turbo? We might in the future. Turbo. It's <laughs> for cleaning up people's lawn with plow heads in. It's for mm -hmm. cleaning up intersection stones off the pavement. Mm -hmm. Was it handheld? It's like a weed whacker. Oh. It's just got a barrel yeah, on it with people flaps. Don't tell my husband about this, okay? Yeah. He'll yeah. Know. It'll be in the minutes. It's so good. You might want one, but he would use one for two minutes. Deep in the minutes. I'm not letting him write the minutes. Deep in the minutes. Don't you tell him, John. Yeah, he won't want it after using it for about 20 minutes. Okay, here you go, Toby. It's a two cycle. It won't start after three, Toby, three do you want weeks this? use. Yes. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 
So they said they don't care. But she said, but you were supposed to get back to her about something, right? The, the last email I said. Whether we can use a mulch without dye. Right. And I've not found any yet. Okay. Just I make sure you let her know that you're still checking on it. Yeah. Communication. So they, they don't want food color dye either? Uh, they didn't really say. For no color at all. Okay. Because she doesn't see the benefit in having the I mean, color. You can dye. see what you've mulched by putting You can see what you've done. You're more right. efficient in applying it. I think if you can show them that it's a food grade coloring, I think. Right, I think just, we're over that hurdle. I think she's fine with that. But yeah. During the conversation about the dye, yeah. she was concerned, was wondering if there was a way to alleviate the dye completely. Mm -hmm. But All right. so far, I've not found anything that that, uh, that you could. Well, John's dye in. explanation makes sense too. He wants to see where you apply it. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I'll f I can follow up with Stephanie because well, she sent us the email. Instant gratification because it looks like you put grass down. Right. Well, yeah. It's instant gratification. Yeah. It's real. Um, I'll, I can follow up. I'll, <laughs> I'll find it's iridescent. <laughs> he thought pink would be a good color. So yeah, there you go. It's really not pretending color. to be grass. <laughs> I'll follow up with Stephanie. She had an email we exchanged with you and I. Um, just so we're completing the communication loop. And, oh, I know what the other thing was. It came up a couple meetings ago, the guardrail yep. up here that you said you had to order and you guys were going to install it. It's, it's in. It's, it's, I didn't go get it. I tried to and get it. Oh, really? That's one of the companies from Monroe. They can't deliver it? Oh. So I'm just going to go get it and install it. Okay. No, I just want to complete the yeah, no, communication with that's all. It's on my agenda. I will make it happen. Okay. The force not fly. Okay. I guarantee you that. Oh, what were you talking about? The guardrail. Guard, guard I just like to keep the communication sure. loop so that we know what's going on. So if we get questions, we can yeah, say if, if Albert's on it. Raining so hard, I could get caught up. And I, could right, I know. Happen. Could you make it happen? On the agenda, sorry. Do a non-rain dance. How about that? I'll, I'll try anything. Okay. All right, um, removal of, Toby sent a couple of things. One of them was a discussion about the Beaver Dam on Kent Hill Road. Watch your language. I know, sorry. <clears throat> um, so it looks like the beavers have totally abandoned that dam. It's, <sighs> since it's sitting there, um, just obstructing the stream, my thought and Alfred's thought is that we should remove it since it's not being used and it's not active and it has three big Slashes in it that have eroded away and it's not doing anything. So they're not inhabiting up the stream of that anymore? They, they may be, but the dam is not doing anything for them. Okay, I think we as should. As far as I know. All right, I think. I, I was hoping maybe this was going to be the case, that it's not active. But I think we should still, before you do anything, Tyler Brown recommended that he come out and. Take a look. I'm bringing, I was bringing it to you to start the discussion, and right. whatever you guys decide we need to do, I just think that no, I there's an obstruction that. In, in the waterway next to the road, and um, if it's not it's not active and there's no mm -hmm. reason for it to be there, then we should think about moving it, and we'll follow whatever procedure so, you need. Well, right. I'm so just curious, what happened last Thursday after all that those flooding rains? Did the road get topped, or the dam get blown out more? Or? I don't know, the dam might have worn away some, I have no idea. Hmm. But it's been deteriorating, you know. When, so. when we had that really high water, and I, I made one, one stab that opened yeah. it up a little bit. They never two, came back. They never came back, and there's two, there's two others that have opened on their own. Hmm. So they're not maintaining. So they're not yeah. doing anything yeah. to the dam. So that's from what I think. So I think we should get follow Tyler's recommendation in his email that said, contact him, the river management, and when you tell him all this, he may say you don't have to contact the river management people or the wetlands people, but I think we should follow the guidance No, I mean, from him. that's why I sent you this letter, is that right. you suggest the procedure if it's to be removed, Yeah. and we would follow the procedure on yeah. this. Okay. Just need your approval to move forward. Correct. Um, Craig? Yeah. This is why I came to the meeting. Um, 
I only happened to see this on the agenda that was posted on the front porch forum. So um, I said, I understand that at times a beaver dam has to go. And, you know, I would rather see it stay. But I'm trying to look at it from your standpoint also. I really am. Can I say one thing on this? From the snowmobile club's perspective, I'm not going to talk for Sherry Fish, but it, it, that dam is flooding her property. It's raised the water level in that whole area, both sides of the road. Where's her it's, Sherry Fish? Where's the her first, first house on the right, going into there, around the corner. But Bob Fitch's place. Blue what? Paint. Oh. So I'm it, sorry. Because that dam is, is, is the other side of the culvert, it's raised the whole level on both sides of the road. It's hmm. causing flooding on her property. Is it it's not primarily this year, or has it been past years? Well, also? since the dam has been there. Well, the dam was, we was had the two years ago. Uh -huh. And the baffle seemed to be still, still higher than it was. was. Well, when because the land is so flat well, right there, just an inch goes way well, back it's, in. It's why we consult with all the landowners. Right. Mm -hmm. We so when right when he when Tyler comes out he should be made aware of that issue so he can look at it and see if it's a you know so I will contact Tyler and get a site visit and let everybody know right what it is right and we need to contact all the landowners and the I mean we had quite a few people there when he came before um, and now we have a new person we should add Sherry Fitch to the discussion. Okay? Yep. Does that satisfy everybody's concern? All right. Um, anything else? Right? No, no, thank you very okay. much. Um, okay. There was some concern at the meeting last time from Alfred about not being able to grade the road where the No Mo Charitable Project is taking place. So we asked you to give us an update tonight about the condition of the road. Okay. I said I'd stop grading those four roads until it's always done for us. Okay. Stop out. Yeah, well I just wanted to satisfy your concern. I'm just I'm not gonna grade weeds in the road. It's gonna fall up through the gravel, it's gonna make an awful mess and it's I, I just it doesn't make sense to do that. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Are you talking about the weeds that he pulls and throws into the yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I wonder. Just, I thought you were talking so about the roads. So they dry out eventually. Yeah. Those four roads will just have to wait. And hopefully we don't get a lot of rain in, in the time that he's doing his pulling. Yep. Mm -hmm. We don't want to grade the rain. Right. Yeah, I don't want to grade in the rain because then it turns blue. Is there an email or something? What? Yeah. Today, you said so you hope you don't get a lot of rain but I'm into the road anymore. Because rain Who grows puddles. That means I have to grade yes. more. Oh, I see. After. No, we don't want to go there. Rain causes yeah. puddles. Okay. Yeah. 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 We have talked right. about charitable enough last meeting. I've done with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I said we would follow up sure. with you we tonight. We were going to put it into a flamethrower, but we... Oh, there you go. But I don't want to get down in the weeds. Uh-huh. Again. All right, moving on. Um, uh, anything say, else? I still think a lot of our concerns could be resolved if we have our own equipment, more roadsides, including the trees on, you know, south of my house. They're creeping out and across the road. And so what's happening, so Ed is going in, cutting into my field to go around the trees rather than limbing the trees. Do we want to put and this so, on? So I'm just saying we there's, good this reason, on? there's good reason to have that mower where we can put it up and mow those limbs. I just got the John, do we want to, can we, if you want to talk about this, I can put it on an agenda. Okay. Excellent point. I just got to, can I just say quickly, I just got an email advertising one of those flail mowers on a tractor. It's $3,000 a week. So that spot that you mentioned by your house, that's a perfect right. candidate for that exactly. type of machine. So you mean we could rent one? We could rent one for a week. It's three thousand dollars. So why don't you then do we, that? we delegate one guy to operate it. There, that, that addresses it, right, John? Well, well you got you got to ask the property owners in advance. I, I I want it cut. You know, I don't want them grading. All right. So tell me what John, tell me what this thing is called. 
And I'll put it on the next agenda for discussion. It's a flail mower. It's, uh, it's an articulating okay. arm flail, flail mower. And it can be rented for $3,000 a week. So let's put it on for discussion next agenda. Instead of trying to do that tonight when it's not, when it's, almost, when it's already 9 o'clock. Yeah, I thought, I, I wasn't going to mention it. Well, see, now you did, but now you got John. I mean, I mean, yeah, but are you going to let are you going to let John drive it? Sure, I don't want to drive it. It's noisy. Okay, are we ready? Town clerk has nothing to update except um, vote tomorrow. Vote tomorrow. I voted today. Vote for me, I'll set you free. I yeah. voted today. <laughs> Let's try. Town Hall Renovation Committee, the notes from the last meeting are in the Google folder. We're meeting this Thursday at the Town Hall. If anybody wants to join us and see what's going on at the Town Hall, 8 o'clock. I've done it, Rose. I've been doing I'm it. I'm so proud of I you. I know, I know. <laughs> um, at 46, the only, there's really no update, right, John? No, so you're voting on something that's related to that right. budget. Budget and okay. articles of agreement. Right. Um, CVRPC. Worthy of note. No. Okay. Um, we already did the cut and humane society contract. <clears throat> so let's talk about um, a few. Thanks, Craig. A few weeks ago, David Ellen Bogan contacted me about, and I think maybe Toby too. There was an accident at the intersection of North Callis Road, right up here, and Kent Hill, and a FedEx truck hit a guy on a bike. The guy wasn't hurt. The bicycle. bicycle? Yeah. The guy wasn't hurt, but the bicycle sustained a lot of damage. Um, and David Allen Bogan, you'll remember, is our rep to the TAC, yeah, to the right. RPC TAC. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to address this concern. Bill Davis contacted me that he doesn't think it needs a stop sign. Dave is requesting a stop sign. Just in my own personal experience, because I come to the town office quite a lot, is I at least three, maybe more times have, and I don't drive fast on the back road, come down around that curve, get almost to that intersection there, and somebody inevitably is not paying attention, they're driving really fast, and they will pull out without even looking to see if somebody's coming. So either way. So FedEx truck was coming down Kent Hill and ran into from the bicycle. I guess that's the case. Yeah. So, um, you know, it did raise my level of awareness after I heard about that, that it's happened to me quite frequently so on what, that what same So what is the big deal? Why don't we just put a stop sign? Bill had a concern with the stop sign. That's only Bill. Why are you a stop sign? Been this way for well, sit over here so we can years. see you. Yeah, come, come, sit here. come sit over here. Zoom in on him. It's been this way for you know a hundred years. Why do you need a stop sign? It's a de facto yield anyway, because it's a T intersection. But people but don't sign. Because people people don't yield signs that. on it. You better be yield sign, that'll work. That's a stop. And what's the matter with the stop sign? You'll need stop, stop anyway. back. Well a stop is no, also but a, a stop, the point I made last time is a stop in that location is also a de facto a de facto yield sign. I mean, I mean I, people are going it, to, it's a reminder to stop and they're going to do what they're going to do. But Well, and if you have a stop sign and people don't respect that and then there right. was an accident, you have something to fall back on. A but yield, a yield sign, sign means, no, a yield way. sign means you must stop if there's a car coming into that intersection. It's the same as a stop sign. You don't think a stop sign stands out more than a yield sign? I think the law is clear that, the, and that's why it's got a red triangle instead of the yellow, it, it means you must stop if that intersection is not clear. Right that's your job to evaluate that. I don't care. I, I do agree there needs to but be something there. I think we should put there. a sign up. I think we need a sign, but in order to put a sign up, we have to... And I know 200 years ago there weren't cars. Going right, or even 100 years horses, ago. Though. Those horses. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I just wanted to put that item on the agenda because there was a couple mm -hmm. of different varying opinions, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I mean, we've got to try to make it as safe as we can. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to do something. I think we should do something. Then. And it's a, I mean, Kent Kent Hill Road comes to a clear T. It's mm -hmm. not. Right. It's not. Right. A, it's not a Y. No, like, it's, it's a definite what like, Singleton and Fowler. You know, it's a clear T. So to mm -hmm. me, I, I guess I just don't understand 
not stopping. <laughs> I don't understand coming to a T and not stopping. Well, if you got good sight distance, you, you, you want to stop somebody you don't know if you're in the city, but you have if good you sight speak, distance. I can call on you. Um, I think that people aren't paying attention. They're just flying down the hill because that's what's happened to me, like for at least three times, that they don't, they don't, they don't even slow down. They just shoot and turn left or turn right. I make the motion that we put a stop sign at the intersection of Kent Hill Road and Peekinbrook Road. There's a second. Where do people want to see a yield sign? Uh, if you try a yield sign, and then it doesn't work, it's just stop sign. Yeah. Nobody seconded, so. Yeah. All right, so you want to make one that says, somebody no, would like no, to make somebody a else can make a yield. <laughs> somebody else can make a yield I'll motion. Prove that we but we need to pass an ordinance. We need to up that we, we update our ordinance to include and we warn uh, the, the updating. Uh, we warn an update to the ordinance that would add a stop sign. I mean, a yield sign to that intersection of Kent Road and Pekin Road. We did. Isn't this what we did? Oh no, because we we warned it as a stop. Um, we, we discussed it. No, the way an ordinance works is that we can, on our own, amend the ordinance. When you amend an ordinance, it's the same process as when you create right. an ordinance and you have to, right. and to me it's always seen backwards, the board approves the revised right. ordinance, right. then the public has 45 days right. to file a petition to not approve of okay. the amended ordinance yeah. or the ordinance. Right, okay. and we already had the conversation that's been on okay. the agenda and blah, blah. Right. right. So, the traffic ordinance that Katie worked on <coughs> needs to be reviewed by Toby and Alfred because some of it says town highway. You know, there, I, I got confused between town highway and the state aid because they have the same number five. And so some, someone had edited it before me, and I'm just not sure that they're right in places. So that's something y'all would look at it. Yeah. Because if you guys could look at it, then we could do put this on our next agenda to approve the updated revised ordinance and we just need to add the stop or the yield sign at the intersection of Kent Hill and number, is that number 10 road right there? It's North Callis Road. North Callis Road. North Callis Road. North Callis Road. Right. I'm on the wrong road. Okay. We have to do the, we made a motion, we didn't second it. We don't have to. We don't have to have a, so well, are we gonna change the ordinance? We are, but the ordinance change won't happen until, just trying to think it through, maybe we should do the motion if that can't hurt. Okay. We did a motion. Yeah. Did somebody second it? No. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, yeah, I'm not sure we really needed to do that, because we're going to, we can update the ordinance and then pass it and then. I see. So it means you didn't really have to do a motion, but it's fine. Motion to update the ordinance and then. Right, then it's done. We already agreed to it. Wow. Yeah, and the discussion. Changes. Right, and the changes. Yeah. yeah. So, if Katie, can can you get that to Alfred and Toby? Sure. Right. Can one of you have time to review it between Change now and the date on it too. July 8th? Yeah. It's a discussion. This could be a motion for a yield sign. Is that right. correct? Right. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Which means you need to stop if someone's coming the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the Ken Hill Road. And that includes bicycles. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm going to launch it after. Yeah. Think about it. Jonathan, I'm sorry, did you, you wanted to make a comment a few minutes ago? No, I'm good. Okay. Just body language. <laughs> okay. Well, we're getting there. It's only 10 after 9. Um, if you remember last year, <coughs> well, before we go on to that, anything else, Toby or Alfred or Bill? The highways are done. The highways are done. Good. Right. Alfred, did you have anything else? Oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a good Ricky Skaggs album. It's old. It's called Highways and Heartaches. Okay. <laughs> that, that's right. that's your name on it. I'll have to burn your copy. Do they have CD for Can they fill it? Right. In our trucks? Yeah. I think so. I hey, remember last year um, we nominated Jamie Morby to go mm -hmm. to a conference. Mm -hmm. They sent around a notice again, it's in the folder. Um, 
Vermont Community Leadership Summit. She went last year. She said it was good. She's glad she went. Um, this came through to me and to the office staff, and we thought um, about Jennifer Whitman on the Cemetery Commission. Oh, switch. No. Well, Jamie went last year, so it's like right the same things. Like it's right. like emerging leaders kind of thing. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's this is the second annual. This is great. Yeah. So I would like to nominate Jennifer Whitman to attend the second annual Vermont Community Leadership Summit. Annual, for annual? Second yeah. annual? I, I swear to second annual. Make sure you get second. that spelling right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed hearing I'm that? assuming you, you contacted her. Uh, yeah, I asked her because I don't want to nominate her and then she's not available and then we miss out on the free. Somebody can go for free. <laughs> Um, okay, I guess we got through everything. We got through a lot. All right, Poplar Cemetery. You saw the email I sent out about mm -hmm. trying to coordinate schedules and yeah. whatnot. Um, so July 22nd, <clears throat> um, Poplar Cemetery closing at the East Montpelier Town Office. I talked to Bruce Johnson who said he would find us a place to meet. So I'm thinking maybe, I don't think it's going to take very long, maybe quarter of 7 or 6.30 to be safe. Mm -hmm. um, at the, I didn't know what times yet, at 6.30 p.m. Um, he, Andy Christensen is supposed to catch up and coordinate with Jim Barlow so Jim can talk to him before the closing. Um, Andy and some of the others are coming to the cemetery commissioners meeting on Thursday night this week to show them all of the stuff that they have electronically. Um, and I, and Jim's all set to meet with Andy, go over documents. So the, that Monday night, the 22nd, we just need Andy for the closing. We don't need the cemetery commissioners to be there unless they want to be. It's an open meeting, so they can be there if they want. And then, so I'm going to tell Jim and Andy 6.30, the 22nd for Poplar. And then we meet with the East Montpelier Select Board at 7 p.m. And that's to continue our discussion from that executive session we had, you remember, a mm -hmm. month or more ago, and we agreed then to meet on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. And this will be also executive session. I would assume so, yes. Mm -hmm. And that way Jim can stay for the portion of that meeting with the East Montpelier Select Board to mm -hmm. see what else they have to say after our last mm -hmm. go around about this. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, I've been in contact with Sam Hill, our sheriff, to find out about getting him to come to one of our meetings. I'm waiting to see if he's available on the 8th. He may or may not be. He's available on the 22nd, but I don't think it's going to work. We're gonna, it's going to be awkward to have any of our meeting continued to another location in the East Montpelier Town Office, I think. So we might have to put it off until August. But I was asked to see if we could get them on the agenda, so that's what I've been doing. The office phone system. Oh, it's, uh, it's too bad because it's a nice phone system that was purchased. Um, Ooh, How did that get purchased? I'm not convinced that what this guy has told us is accurate. Uh, okay. Right, because Cliff did a lot, a lot of research oh, so you, on this. We bought this right. instead of laying around. No, 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 we bought it new. No, no, no. We, oh, okay. Cliff did a lot of, we all okay. knew about it. Right. Cliff did a lot of research on this. I'm thinking that there's an email. There's a digital the emails solution. In the folder. I, I mm -hmm. saw the email. Who was that guy? Like, Body? Rowdy? Rowdy. 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 He, he was, was named, on a show called Rawhide. He was named. Yeah. This guy was named after a uh, old Clint Western Smith. Western character. Clint Eastwood's character on Rawhide was really? named Rowdy. Yep. Rowdy Yates. Who would have knew? Goodness. Who would have knew? And so he was named after that. Um, My real name is Buckeye. I have was named after Gregory Peck. <laughs> <laughs> <Nothing> <laughs> <sense>. <laughs> okay, 
So yeah, I, I touched base with Judy this morning uh, to kind of get a status update. Um, so yeah, he's a he's a guy who makes a living doing phone systems and whatnot, and he sells phone systems, and he's willing to consider buying this from us and selling us one of the phone systems he sells. Uh, um, there is um, some additional work that uh, Consolidated needs to do before we can fully tie in the four <coughs> lines coming into this building, into the phone system. So this guy basically hasn't done anything other than make that analysis. Um, and now we've got a work order request in with Consolidated to get them to come and do the pairing on the lines or whatever it is they need to do so that all four lines can come in. Um, but I still think that there is, that analog solution is ultimately where we want to go. And we may have to settle for a partial solution up until the time we remodel, look at the possibility of remodeling this building and What's reorganizing. The, what is the, go, skipping all the technology, what is the problem? Yeah. The basic issue is, is if they're on the main line talking, the phones won't roll over to the second line so people can leave a message and it won't roll over to the voicemail so people can leave a message. So what happens? It rings or it... It rings and busy. people get a weird message saying, yeah, no one can take your call right now, you know, that's um, it. Or sometimes it just rings and doesn't And other times it can just ring and not give them any announcement at all. So it's happened to Oh, this is the current situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. But I believe after doing additional research, there is a phone tree system that has to be initiated on the system for it to do what they want it to do. Like consolidated? Uh, no. No, it's internal. We can do oh. it. Uh, oh. And that was my plan, was to come down here and test that on Memorial Day weekend. What but, do you um, uh, Nature had other plans, so. <laughs> Gravity got away. Yeah. So is the, is the is the system that you helped us buy installed? Yes. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just a matter right. of just enabling the, the functionality. Right. So, so it's not, it's not right. completely. It's they're not just configured. Is what right. 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 They're they're just they're very anxious to get the phone system up and running. They know Cliff got hurt and that he's been pressed for time. So they were trying to avoid yet another project for Cliff. Yeah. So. As fate would have it, I am off on July 5th, as well as July 4th. And that will provide me another opportunity, well, assuming the healing is going to continue. I was going to say, how are you going to do that? I've got two hands here, love. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you have to crawl around on the floor? I'm thinking not. Oh, OK. That's what I would be concerned. And if it comes to roping more wire, I don't know that I'd be physically capable yet of doing that. Well, but call me. Right. But we yeah, we can all do manual on. labor if you right. bring the brains. Right. The first line of defense is um, the programming of the phone, and that I'm capable of doing. Well, if you want somebody to come down and crawl around, call but them. If that doesn't <laughs> yield results, then the next phase <laughs> is right crawling around, and actually what it means uh, is going up into the attic. Ew. I didn't know we had an attic. How do you get to the attic? From the back. You have to open it from the outside, climb up on. Climb a ladder. Climb a ladder. A ladder. A ladder. A ladder. A ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm willing to do, actually. Oh, no. no, 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 no. But no, you want to wait till you heal. Right, exactly. I can, I can get up on a ladder. So I was going to look into the possibility of doing this. Meanwhile, Rowdy can't do anything into consolidated, does whatever they're going to do, and they haven't even got back to our work order request yet. Yeah, yeah so I think there's, hmm. and actually, um, this is the Thursday that we do a town hall meeting and a staff meeting, mm -hmm. and, and um, Andy, to lead into this part of the conversation, where is it, John? Um, contacted me, he's been trying to get quotes for somebody. There. <laughs> Got that on tape, did you? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I thought you missed it. Um, for somebody to um, 
do the roof repair that we've had going on for the last couple of years. Yeah. And I guess there is now possibly a bigger issue that folks don't want to bid on this project because they're afraid when they get You're underneath, right. it's going to be a bigger project than what they bargained for. So, Andy wants, to, so Andy wants to talk to us about it. He would do it. Who? Andy, right? I don't know. We can ask him on Thursday. So I think the concern is, is that you know we might go above that five thousand dollar. Did you get it? I don't okay. think one so. mosquito. I got it. I hope you got it. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't, she didn't get it. No, it, it came, <laughs> no, it came this way, Jerome. Like, but you got it. No, no, he means he recorded it. Really? The attempt. <laughs> <It> really? <looked. laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, we can we can ask Andy some more. You did, you did. I did? You can do a skin on that, right? Just like for right there. Your hand slapped him. Oh, wow. It slapped him all the way, almost your notebook. Slapped the dead body. You want to No, dead body. No, it's roasted. No, no. No. Oh, it's a dead mosquito. It's protein. My chickens love that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we'll find out some more information from Andy on Thursday. I invited him to. Come to the staff meeting to let everybody know that this sounds like it's going to be a bigger issue. So we might have to go out to a formal bid to get it fixed if it's going to be more than the five thousand dollars. Well, we don't know. Right. So I guess you we can't bid to... something you don't know what's underneath. Well, I guess Andy or somebody needs you have to have someone decide. go in there and start the job and. Then... Well, maybe part of the bid is that they go and look at the job. And yeah, it's... but you don't want to bid it because it might only be. Three thousand. We don't know what's in there. Right, that's part of the problem. That's why yeah. people aren't giving us quotes on how much yeah. it's going to cost to do the job because they don't want to say right. four thousand dollars and then get in there. I think we hire our staff to do it. They want to do it. That's what. Andy. That's what right. Yeah, that's what we have. We have Alfred do, and right. so we can talk more to Andy about him doing the work when we catch up with him on. I'm hoping he's come on on Thursday. And then the other good news is that I met with Nick Emlin on last Monday. We got the, it's no longer L-E-O-P, it's L-E-M-P, Local Emergency Management Plan. Got that all done. Where was that? We got it all done, it's all filed with CVRPC. Nick's gonna send it to Judy to put on the website, get rid of the old one, so we're all good. Good, excellent. Now we have some minutes. Apparently we never signed minutes from town meeting. Okay, did we have you approved them? We yeah. approved them, we just didn't sign That's them. right, and I guess Judy keeps them with the actual signatures somewhere. Right, oh, so we approved them on the 26th of <coughs> March. But we didn't, it wasn't 18, Katie, it wasn't, didn't we approve uh -huh. them on the 19, in 2019? Are those the right minutes? Did I just, yeah. did I make an error? Yeah. March 6, 2018, didn't it? Wasn't it 2019? Yeah, are those the right minutes? Town meeting was the 5th. So maybe those are left. And then we met on Monday the 11th. So that's the wrong I think that's the last one. We did find it signed the first time we signed on the second one after. I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> um, March. I think these are the yeah. wrong ones. Mm -hmm. Last year. 2018, March 6th. That's it. Yeah, so those are last year's. So, so, we, so we approved them on March. Do you think that she wanted last year's? Maybe last year's. No, she said this year. That's what I thought, too. So do we have them that we can print off? I can't print from this computer. It doesn't. I thought we fixed that problem. They tried to fix it. Oh. He was here for a long time. But it can we email it to Cliff and then he can send it? Can you print it from here, Cliff? I'm not, I'm not paired with it. Same issue. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. They, they worked on it for maybe an hour and a half. Um, RB TAC over the phone. Oh. Well, that'll be a question from one of the Yeah, our do you want that work done? <laughs> yeah. We can do it next time. <coughs> right, we can do it next time. We just say we got the wrong ones. We got the town meeting. Right. Okay. Um, I can't believe RB TAC could be. Are we at all other business yet? No, uh, we got to approve the. Um, minutes. Minutes from June 10? 10 and 13. Mm -hmm. and I think Sharon and I made a couple comments. Yeah, how many, it's, 
How many Christians and people were there? Wasn't there a couple? Well, Layla, yeah. Yeah. Her husband. Was that a man and Ann, Andy and Lila? Christensen. Is that what you're saying? Andy Christensen was sitting here. Right. But there was an older couple who came together who sat over here who I think were both Christensen's and one was Lila. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, is that, that wrong? Like that is, no, if you have the sign up sheet with that. Well, at first you put Stanley. Is that his name? Stanley's they did not sign Stanley up. Stanley passed away. They, they didn't sign up, but I thought folks said their name and, names as they went around those two. I asked them before they left. Uh, Judy dead. would know. Oh, so oh, Stanley, that's right. I'll check the yeah, Stanley's dead. Judy. Peter, Peter and Andy's dead. Oh, wait, is there, no, there's another brother. They were maybe in there seven. So I guess we need to fix the names. Oh, the 80s. 80s. Okay, I'll ask. Yeah, ask Judy. Oh, Judy tomorrow. Right. They live on Fowler Road. Okay, thanks. Oh, that's Peter. Peter and Lila? Listen, Fowler. Peter? Lila, L-I-L-A. -L -L Peter and Lilla. Peter and Lilla. Peter Christensen and Lilla Fowler. Okay. Oh, Peter Christensen and Lilla Fowler. Fowler. It's not. It's one L L I. One L. Lilla. Like they're not married. Are they a couple? I think they're married. In fact, I know them. But I don't know if she took his name. I don't know. I know him that way. Okay, it's Judy. So she'll figure it. Yeah. Judy would know all that. Right. So we'll figure it out. Also, the Christensen are spelled with different, spelled differently. So Andy, Andy, okay. yeah. So while you're at it, you yeah, probably sure all spell know. their names the same way. Make sure we got their names okay. spelled correctly. All right. Uh, so scroll down. Good Norwegian name. Yep. My uncle Gunnar, like, Gunnar Gunnar Christensen. He explained that the process would look Norwegian. like the hot, the town was acquiring a business. Um, okay. And I took out the one dollar. Mm -hmm. The dollar doesn't actually change hands. There's no, there's no, there's well, no. Well, that's what I wondered. Because yeah, I know he said that. But Jim said that, but I couldn't figure out how you would, how we would do that. I pull a dollar out of my pocket. And no, it's he's always say that for one dollar and, and other you know, considerations. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just say so nothing ever really changes hands. Okay. Based on that dollar. Um. Okay. Go ahead. Now, I remember that the Poplar Hill folks were going to have to pay the insurance premium by July 1. So that's on them to kind of finish that. Erosion failing. So if it's town-owned, it will be town-owned? Yeah. So there's no, we won't have to pay the penalty on property tax to a nonprofit? No, Jim said that, he, that we're going to have to go through the whole um, property transfer tax. No, no, but you know how we we uh, waive nonprofits' obligation to pay profit. Maybe cemeteries are exempt. That's different. Yeah, that's different. If this is a town-owned cemetery, they don't pay taxes. Anymore. No, I know, but that wasn't town-owned. It was private nonprofits. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. So, the but maybe pay. cemeteries are always exempt. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember know. waiving theirs. I don't either. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Change that needed. Belleville and Callis has so far used. It should, it should, should oh, be only. only. I'm see, I see yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I think that might be the last thing, but let's Carries, and now we just have the minutes from the June 13th. I think that was everybody. 
I'll get you. I gotta get you that open meeting law document. Yeah, let's put that. Put on the website. It's pretty much. A little updates. Did you notice the time cards? Okay, this mm -hmm, I saw road that. crew till six thirty. Yeah, they were there till six thirty. I checked it to see if they were in there. All right, somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes of June 13th? So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing I wasn't at that one, right? No. Yes, I want to see. Okay. All right. Um, oh, that was the party. Yeah. That was the That's right. So, did you detail who ate what in yeah. the minutes? No. No, because we didn't want you to be sorry. That I'm really sorry. I'm already it. starting to salivate thinking. Yeah, well, next year. So, where'd all leftovers go? They stayed there? No, we divided it up amongst everybody that was left. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. How many bottles you got going? What's in here? Tea? Yeah, I wonder if she's Why? slipping. Oh, sure. Slip the booze in there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if she wobbles out of her seat. All right. <laughs> All right. Do we have anything else we would like to go into old business, new business, executive session? I, I just, uh, there was an email sent to Denise and I from Stephanie Kaplan. She did some digging. She's the chair of the Conservation Commission. Great. Right. And she did some rooting around uh, uh, back in town uh -huh. records in terms of the. Uh, of the first authorization of the conservation fund. So I want to read it to you, and I forward it to the balance and select board. Um, she says, I finally figured out what actually, what was actually authorized, you don't have to put this in the press, when I, and I sent it to you, Katie, when the town voted to create the conservation commission and also to establish a reserve fund to use to purchase property or interests in property for the purpose of conserving important lands. According to the language of the articles from the 1989 town meeting that Judy sent a few months ago, those were two entirely separate actions. My conclusions from delving into this and reading the statutes that were cited in the articles that were voted on is that while the Conservation Commission has the authority to do educational outreach, inventories, etc. It can't use money from the conservation fund for anything other than purchasing property or interest in property, because that was that was the stated purpose that the town voters authorized. However, the voters can authorize the fund to be used for other purposes at the next town meeting. Right. Whoever wrote the conservation fund guidelines apparently never read the statutes. That I'll be explaining all this to the conservation that. commission meet meeting tomorrow night if there's time at some point uh, we need to talk about it so just want to get that on your radar and you know we have been authorizing use of the fund for outreach education outreach right we like the and, and, well because and we and thought we stuff. were acting appropriately because it, well because yeah, according was, to the guidelines we followed the guidelines right. and the attorney right. did that review um, right so. you no know, longer lives in town so we can't um, why um, blows ours no so it was all in good faith. I've already good, I sent good chair. Um, he was yeah. um, that email. I sent it to Judy and asked her to put it in the file for town meeting for should we between okay. her and I and the office staff we keep kind of notes yeah. about things we want to do for next town meeting mm -hmm. so that we remember to put that on the morning. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Just want to get that out there. Yep. Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? Yeah. I'll you sure? You want to I, stay I, I move that we adjourn this select board meeting until the next time. Which is July 8th. July 8th. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.